What up, Banditos? It's Saturday, March 2nd. We are back, live. Five directives, headshots, SHD exposed. You know how we do it. So I am excited to be back into regular game mode so that we can rake up some of those red stars. I haven't played the event in a few days. I mean, I know we tinkered around a little bit yesterday, but all of my time has been going into New York lately. I'm like a master of New York, <laughs> of running new tunes through. So when we got done streaming last night, I went in, played with the kids, ate some dinner, came back out and deleted another character and ran it through New York. And I gotta say, I'm really rich right now. My resources are huge. Like, spend because you get to spin down your watches uh, before you delete the characters. And so I'm like basically topped out on everything. Uh, it's nuts. But, you know, implementing some of the things that we've been learning and it's just magical. It is a new world for running characters through. So I've taken it to the next level. So part of this stuff, I'm working on a video right now. So this is all going to get to you. It's going to hit your news feed and YouTube and like probably by Tuesday, Tuesday morning. So it's a lot of editing, a lot of, a lot of stuff to put together here in a logical order because all the tips and stuff like that and guides, you know, there's, there's reasons why we're doing it. I've got to explain those reasons, put it together to you in a logical and interesting format and make sure this is something that you could also follow. And so I'm, I'm doing this from... A new character, a new account perspective. So I've, I've created a new account and I've, I've done this with that. And then I'm doing it from an experienced account perspective like this one here and doing it through that to see what's the difference and how can I um, dictate those differences to you or explain those differences to you or help relate the guide to whatever side of the fence you're on. Anyways, so like Matt and Fog of War jumped on the other day, gave me a couple more tips. And that's what I basically tested yesterday as well is even in at the XP game, because that's one of the challenges is that we get to um, the we get to Keener and we're still at like level 36. And it's like, oh, we got her really fast, but our XP can keep up. And so I'm kind of managing that too and was figuring that out, which I'm pretty close to having that perfect. But so it just the countdown just changes the game. And so what we've learned and we're able to deploy even further is that you can use your countdown credits on your level 31 character to buy level 31 named items of whatever. So death grips and I got death grips and I got the apartment. I got the rail splitter. I mean, I was just I got the punch drunk. I got I'm also level 31. And then what I learned after all of that, kind of on my own, was that level 31 accepts expertise. So you could take that. So I got the Culebra shotgun, which is amazing for a level 31 character, okay? You do one shot in everything in the chest, everything. And you could go back in and dump expertise into that Calibre at level 31, not to mention re-roll max damage to targets out of cover. And so you are just a torturing menace to New York. I mean, you are like the hunter in New York. <laughs> like you're going through, I mean, they should be running and holding on to their britches while they do it. So it's, it's really fun. It's really exciting. The idea is to make this as painless as possible so that at least, you know, maybe every quarter just depends on how much uh, resources you need, but that you can delete a character, run them through and then, you know, kick back or delete all three characters if you want to. And which is what I'm doing. So I'm going through each one of my characters, deleting them and running them through New York to refresh their watch. And it's allowed me to to craft a bunch of unicorns to fill up on tactical assessments and all the SHD uh, materials. It's it's a crazy experience. Something I've been holding off on doing, but since I was putting together the guide anyways, I was like, oh, I might as well do it now so that I can learn and and then teach. And so really enjoying it. And so Thunder Logger, for example, level 15 expertise is really, you know, to be honest with you, like, <clears throat> I, I never really felt the benefits of anything over level 15. Like, like 10%, 15% expertise seems to be like the sweet spot and everything greater than that is just kind of like, eh, okay. You know, <laughs> the build is usually already doing what it needs to do by that point. 
You know what I mean? So 15% is good because it's the equivalent of a red core. And I think that when we get to 30%, uh, expertise which is going to be a ways right that'll also be good because then now you got two red cores worth of expertise coming on a weapon or something anyways so uh really excited about this i'm really energized about this guide and so i'm actually going to do i got one more character to delete on this account and run through um and so i'm going to use that one as a as this a play-by-play -play. but uh, i i've already created this master level 31 build and it just slaughters and so yeah all you need is a level 31 build and basically six pieces is what you're saving plus one weapon so seven pieces the backup weapon doesn't matter and your pistol doesn't really matter because you can pick up pick up those along the way basically you're not worried about your needing to change your weapon up until like level 37 basically when you get to keener so your weapons hold and so i ran the same build all the way through level 31 all the way through and killed keener with it really easily really easily so really excited to share with that but that's not what we're doing today i just wanted to share that little bit to get you guys excited <laughs> about this upcoming guide video that will be for everybody whether you're new or experienced i think finding a better way to get through new york is probably something you want to keep in mind and then um and maybe some of these things you already know maybe some of them you don't but hopefully got some stuff to pass on so today we're going to do shd we're going to do all directives but what i was going to do here um at the same time is play around with the different snipers so uh we got the model 700 which we've been using lately the brutus that came along and so i want to kind of go back between the 700 the brutus the cover srs and that's probably it but i'm gonna probably sprinkle in the white death just for comparison purposes but um the reason why is because i've been cre i created this 100 weapon handling build and then i changed it up uh, it looks a little should look a little bit different if you've been following along but notice so i got 100 weapon handling and so we've created a 100 weapon handling build before if you're interested in that video you can check it out it's called the white ninja sniper build and of course that's because it's using the sniper back i'm sorry the ninja backpack here but uh and that got a 100 100 weapon handling but because of project resolve and some of the changes um one of the big ones is that overlord got a big 30 percent weapon handling attribute now it used to be maybe 15 i think it was 15 before anyways um Either way, it's 30% and that plus hot shots is 60% there. And so it's allowed me to get rid of some of the other pieces I was running, which was striker. I had one piece of striker and one piece of contractors gloves or uh, Petrov to get to that 100%. So we're able to get to that 100%. Uh, and then I'm running Bellstone. And then I'm also, I also decided to take off sharpshooter and sharpshooter is nice because it gives you breathe control and a little bit of headshot damage so we're gonna lose a little bit of headshot damage but it's not much it's only 15 percent but we don't really need breathe control anymore in theory because we got 100 percent weapon handling so will we miss it will we not and if so which weapon will work best in this scenario because if i can keep gunner then that's going to get us even more ammo faster, even when we're playing out of cover, which is important for an out of cover sniper, which is what I want to do. And then we're also able to get the 10% armor on kill plus the 10% from here, which is also giving us regen. So now we're at 20% armor on kill with 100% weapon handling and better ammo situation, which is something where snipers struggle. They struggle with ammo and I play really fast and aggressive. So what up, Kanickel? Kaniki? Kaneki. Kaniki. <laughs> Kaniki. Am I saying that right? So, yeah, anyway, so we're going to support with that. Uh, and so, what I'm going to do here is I'll just go ahead and run determined, just keep them all on determined. Um, there we go. And I've been going back and forth on this, but I guess the idea is to neutralize a sniper to make it extremely welcoming and fast for every player. And so, we'll do that. And so, the determined is just going to kick in on that. So, um so there's a covert so i want to start with the covert and then so the big three are going to be the the srs the m700 and the model 700 which one do we like you know so on this one 
right out of the gate, you're going to need your nemesis on an elite to start it because these are going to hit at about 6 million. And I could showcase that before we get out there. Um, and so and I haven't put a lot of uh, um, time with the SRS since they buffed it. They gave it a 30% increase. Um, and I wouldn't even mind doing this with the... Um, the mantis too but we'll start here so this is uh 4.2 all right so that's that's pretty low um okay and then i mean it still works but i'm just saying that's that's on the lower side it's low because it's fast all right let's look at um this one no is that the one i want yeah it's the only one i have really uh let's do the model 700 all right and then was that other one running a scope i think it was no scoping that wasn't i that's probably why it was so low yeah so we'll no scope this for now we're just getting base differences here okay what no damage numbers what's that about he's immune oh there it is <laughs> okay let's try that again that was weird do you see that all right, let's try this again. Okay, we still got it. Let me uh, switch weapons and then break it. All right, should be fresh. So 5.2. It's about almost a million higher, I think. And then the M700 is going to be probably somewhere in the middle here. Now, if you put on the scope, they're going to get hit a lot harder because that's quite a bit more headshot damage we're missing there. And I might run with the scope. Um, I don't mind running and gunning with the scope. I kind of like it. Um, okay. So this one is probably going to be in the middle. Let me refresh this. Huh. That doesn't look like five meters to me, but that's all right. 4.1. So that's the difference. Probably the damage to armor to damage to targets out of cover. Yeah. So did my SRS have, um, expertise on it no so it's hitting harder than m700 which is surprising what's going on here uh covert srs what well, the same base damage the stats are basically the same except one has damage to targets out of cover huh i didn't realize that these two were so close in damage uh the srs is better though look at it. it's a little bit faster on the reload and the RPM. All right, we're going SRS then. Let's start there. Um, and then we'll put more stability on. Take more stability here. Weapon handling, larger mags. And then... Oh, that's right. We don't have the digital scope because I took off Gunner. So let's start off with the 12X and see if we can play fast and easy with that. Okay. It's better to demonstrate with the scope because most of you aren't going to be running and gunning. <laughs> with these builds but so that's why i'm gonna do that and then uh let's get out there and do something with ourselves let's turn on the directives um and let's reset these what up miles Yeah, I need an SR one. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't have one. I've been looking. I have had my eye open. I'm on the lookout, but I just haven't got any good drops. Let's turn on the game mode real quick. And I've gotten a thousand of them. I've I've tried them before Project Resolve, and I really liked it. The SR one does play nice and smooth. It's not my favorite personally but it's a great one it's a great one it's got a lot of mod attachments fast reload it's up there in damage too right i think it's at 1.2 either way strong enough
So basically, I have two sniper builds that I'm looking to roll out here in the near future. One of them is the 100% weapon handling version. So I'm trying to finalize what direction I want to take it. And then the other one is um, going to be the strongest sniper one using the three-piece hot shot with the Model 700. So that's why it's not a bad idea for this build to not have the Model 700, but some people just like using the strongest sniper, whatever the case, whatever the build. So that's always an option, of course. All right, let's see, who can we pick off here? Is that guy in the top? That guy I can't see very well. So right out of the gate, we're one tapping with our nemesis. So that's a good sign. And we got a 20% armor on kill. Now we just need to confirm, which it should. So 18 million second shots, so lots of overkill there. And then from here, you're going to be fast and agile and a killing beast. I still like the SRS. I mean, I really do. Oops, that's me. I mean, that's the 100% weapon handling. Hitting at 20 million. That's boss killer. Some bosses are a little bit over that, but 20 million is a good place to be. I mean, I've never seen it as a big, big point. And having to put two shots in the boss. Does anybody else see the problem with that? <laughs> I mean, it's just like some people have it make it a big deal. It's just like, why would I run that build when I can run this other build that can two one shot a boss? And be like, yeah. I mean, so you're gonna give up 1.9 million or a million in armor so that you can one shot a boss? I mean, I don't see that being an even an even trade, you know. Speaking of bosses, so yeah, almost one shot in that boss. My Sometimes 20% armor on kill doesn't look like 20% armor on kill, does it? So that tells me we, we have enough overkill, we could probably put on more armor. So we could we could probably turn on an armor core. So after this, let's go ahead and add another armor core to give ourselves some more resistance since we don't have bonus armor. So we got good recovery, but the bonus armors. And then you got good blind firing capabilities. So that's a hip fire right there, or blind fire, whatever you want to call it. So let's see how far we could take it. Probably too far. There it is. So not bad, you know. I mean, you're not going to play like that full time, but there are times, right? When you got an enemy, a riot foam guy in your face. Definitely comes in handy. So it's nice. So uh, this is not with sharpshooter. So it gives us some flexibility there, too. So if you wanted to go protection from elites instead... You need to have an answer for your ammo. So that's why it's either gunner or sharp. Sharpshooter is a good uh, a good solution for ammo, but let's charge up and see what happens. Well, I guess that wasn't it. <laughs> it's kind of fun to blind fire though i mean those are easy blind fire shots those aren't even hard i'm not even trying so this will probably take two shots oh no he's more than two shots yeah he's a big boy 
charge compromise. Love how fast he reloads. Oh, what the fuck? I mean, you have no idea how helpful it is to have, what up, Dark? This kind of weapon handling for the Nemesis specifically. The Nemesis is a pain in the butt to use. On all levels, it's just slow. All right, all right. Come here. Oh, I hope that directive fix. Let's see. All right, fixed. So that felt good. Let's try the uh, the M seven hundred. So the M seven hundred, I think it's one of its winner chicken dinner attributes is its larger mag. I think it's got a larger one, right? Well, that's twelve two, so maybe not. It's going to be the mods. A little faster. Yeah. Hmm. It's the mods. Maybe? They're the same weapon. How's this working out? It shouldn't be that way. I'll try it. See if I can figure it out. So we're running the 12X. So I, I don't feel like I'm hampered by... Running the bigger mag, I'm oh, sorry, scope. I feel like it's it's nice. And I'm going to be playing a little bit more aggressive once we get warmed up. Kind of like pushing in on her face. Putting my muzzle in her face. Face muzzle in fools. Oh, yeah, take your time, Kinnicky. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate the support. So uh, while that build, it's a build from scratch, so it's all high end. I'll show you here in a second. Let's grab this shit. Uh, so it's built around the, the ninja backpack, really. So the ninja, the criticals are here are the ninja headhunter. And then you're probably going to want at least one piece of hot shot. So that's 30% of your weapon handling, right? And then 30% marksman rifle damage, so not, not bad. And the reason why it's not a bad idea to get rid of sharpshooter, which we did, is because of all the emphasis on um, marksman rifles. So the sharpshooter doesn't pick up on that, right? I mean, the uh, attack 50. But the nemesis does. So the nemesis can, in some cases, the nemesis is actually stronger than the attack 50. And this is probably one of them. Now, I, I can't demonstrate that because I don't have that specialization equipped. But um, those those are the circumstances. When you start running things like Habsburg and Araldi, and that's what we have, right? So we're running two-piece Habsburg. So there's headshot damage and marksman rifle damage, 20%, right? And that's 30% marksman rifle damage. So that's 50% damage that the, the TAC-50 wouldn't be picking up on. But the nemesis is. That's a 2.8 million uh, base damage nemesis right there. So, anyways, and then the reason why we're running two pieces of Overlord is so we get the 30% weapon handling, getting a little bit of accuracy. And then, of course, damage to target side of cover, which is nice. Everything's weapon handling everywhere that I can. And my headshots aren't all maxed out yet, so we can increase some damage here. And then the bellstone for the other 10% armor on kill. So we're at 20% armor on kill Give him some survivability. Now, if you're a play from cover sniper, 10% is probably enough. But I'm not so good at sitting still and looking pretty. Oh, yeah. What is the uh, project? Bounties are fun. I've been, I was running bounties last night, too. 
downtown west downtown west bank headquarters all right so we'll pin that i didn't get to my weeklies yet i don't know if i'm going to What a destroyer of words. Mr. Camacho is back. Vote for Camacho. Oh, yeah, you got to get that backpack. I think it's been... It's not a damaged backpack, right? It's not. It's But it's it's a diversity play. You know, looking for more utility here, more utility there, you know, than... That's going to give you the customization, more customization options. Uh, it's sensitive, though. You really want to consider every attribute. You, you don't really want an attribute to be uh, wasted because you're already losing a backpack talent. So every attribute you want to be contributing. So 19 million. So, yeah, about the same damage as the other one. So this one's going to be a little bit different because I don't have damage to targets out of cover. But doesn't seem to be making that much of a difference at this stage. Wait, do I not have determined on? I might not. I might have forgot to put on determined. Yeah. Ooh, that bleed. Jesus H. Oh, yeah, Ryan Preservation here. Yeah. How far out of combat do you think you have to go? Before you can tinker. There. Seems like that would be far enough. No. It's not. <laughs> Farther! At this stage, you might as well just <laughs> go back to the freaking White House, huh? Jeez. Now, what are they waiting? There we go. Okay. Let's tinker that. Yeah, King, you saw that? Yeah, I was in New York. Yeah, the green stuff is um, a directive. It's, it's called uh, scavenge skills. So you need those for your skills to work. So once your skill goes on cooldown, it's basically broken, and those are supposed to be like parts for your skill. Let's see if we can fix our armor here. There it is. So as you can see here, my skill has got the green, and I need three green uh, parts basically. Now two. You just got it, Dark? Good job. Mission complete, huh? Much. 
You know, I was thinking that, you know, it's kind of silly to run and gun as a sniper, only in the Division 2, though, right? And the reason why is because um, we're missing, I feel like we're missing a rifle class, you know? Marksman rifles. That's what they call this all, but they're all, you know, some are, are they snipers or are they marksmen? I mean, both, right? I think we have both. But I think they lean more towards snipers than marksmen. Uh, mostly because of what they give us in the form of mods. Not so much the weapon design. So, you know, they don't give us uh, flex scopes, as for instance, you know? Ooh. Got that boss in one shot. Critted on him. That armor break's annoying, huh? I think, uh, for feeling perspective, I think I still like the SRS over this, especially since they're the same damage now. But that's kind of annoying that they didn't give a separation between the M700 and the SRS. They're holding the same... Well, I mean, this one's got a longer underbarrel, so you can run the link. I guess if that's helpful, but if we go back to this now, there's there's a long version of this too So I can't hold a link, but The other one's got reload speed, but this one doesn't really Let me see. What is it? 1.6 1.5 it's got a faster reload speed anyways, let's try this. Uh, let's pull out of the 12x scope Let's drop down to an 8 Stop twitching, dude. Charge. Now, I'll miss my crosshairs, but since we got determined, it might not matter anyways. So, it might be the fix to be making it more like a battle rifle. Let me fix my broken armor. Yeah, they're not any more tactical. Sometimes you'll see, like, basically the only difference is um, a little bit more stability. Literally, if you look at the differences in a lot of the snipers, it comes down to stability. And then uh, reload speed and mag size, which is nice, but I feel like it's play style that it needs to be tailoring itself to, right? And a designated marksman is going to be playing an out of cover like I am. He's going to be on the move sometimes. You know, I like this actually way better. The ADEX scope, it's pretty nice. You lose a little bit of damage, but you gain the flexibility. And if you need crosshairs for those real long shots, then you could just whip out your nemesis. Well, got his head, anyways. So again, the loss of damage isn't a big deal because all your damage is coming out of this guy anyways. Yeah, it gives you a little more hip fire capability. Oh, I can't see. Ah, fucking foam. It's always the foam. There, take some of that foam. Ah, bled out. Oh, I can't fast travel back. Super annoying. What up, geezer?
Yeah, we're just pride's fun when you figure out its little its little tricks, right? Friendly control point nearby. I guess we're gonna have to fast travel. Salute. Ugh. Sokolov. What up, Super? All right, we need some ammo. buddy look you survived that Yeah, so we're basically in the same uh, kill shot number with the 8x scope. It's over 19, non crit. Magrick is hitting 23 months and showing that gold school love. Appreciating you, man. shut the boss right there there's just something about the srs that i like you know it just i don't know if i'm imagining it but i mean the damage is the same as the m700 it just feels faster like the way it shoots the way it rechambers i don't remember these green things those green lights being there Do you guys? I don't remember those green illuminations. Uh, headshot damage is 224 on the 8x scope and then 246 on the Nemesis. So if you're running sharpshooter, that'll give you 15% more. But I'm running gunner for the armor and kill. Thank you for the assist, Agent. We can do Okay, so we gotta head to the west side of town. Let's go put some work in. Let's get our thumbs warmed up and see if we can push this 8x scope. That armor brick is annoying though because you don't get the armor kits back. <laughs> you know, you don't get the number of armor kits that you need to feel good about it. Let's, uh, what do we need to go to west? What does it say? Downtown west, okay. I think that's, Catch on fire territory, isn't it? 
Uh, sort of, it's a mix. Hyenas and outcasts. Emmeline! A chameleon, cool. What, what, um, guarding location nearby. Kaniki, what secondary attribute did you get on your chameleon? Did you get it with damage to targets out of cover? I think it normally comes with crit chance. What's good, demon? Which is good too. I've thought about it for the chameleon. It's, it's, I'm kind of in the middle. So, the, what's unique about the chameleon is it's the only assault rifle that gives basically all the crit chance you need to be successful. And so you could take that away to put damage to targets out of cover, which is probably the better choice anyways. But then you end up having to put a bunch of crits back on your build to replace that. But damage to targets out of cover is more rare, so that's why you want to do it. Because you're likely not going to be running to Fox's prayers. So, you know, but... So I think we got to do the bank headquarters, right? Yeah, okay, let's do it. You're gonna need to get the access codes. Oh, to the they took my ammo. The item the hyena stole from Air Force One. Our hyena insider says whoever's posted in the old CEO's office will have a key card that should give you access to the vault. You swapped it. Got it. Obi, thrice. What's up, Obi? <laughs> you want a refund on your on your white death i know man i i was talking about that the other day miker i was like it's good that they change up the metas but boy does it make the expertise system suck because i had the same thing i mean i white death is one of the weapons that i invested in because i use it so much you know 17 percent weapon damage on that thing and now it 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 just doesn't even compete anymore it's like you know well, it does. It does. From a reload, from empty perspective, it's better than a Model 700 from reload from empty. But the fact that the Model 700 can one-shot elites out of the gate, oh, it wins, you know? And it handles better. It's got The Model 700 has less of a recoil kick. At least for me. So fast i just and it might be the fact that it's got a shorter barrel i mean in much in many other games they make that a factor in your rds like the sh you know the shorter the faster you can pull that gun in sight but the division two doesn't technically as far as i know make that a, a metric i mean it's not a metric we can see at least but as far as I know, it's not a part of the game design either. To get down to that nitty gritty. I wish it was though. Oh. More. Uh, we should probably be doing the whole thingy with the cover to cover thing. So we can get stars and stuff. Lack of storage space is the real deal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And gear sets, I gotta say. Gear sets is not helping the situation. 
Yeah, six pieces times many every amount of variation you want of that thing. Annoying. Ooh, one shot at that boss. We're doing a good job one shotting bosses. That's no expertise. Oh, he's a big boy. I'll switch for him. Oh, ho, 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 ho! Two shot heavies! It's a good build. That's 100% weapon handling. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that swap. <laughs> Crazy hands. Not getting as much ammo as I like from Gunner, though. Looks like that key card is the one we were looking for. It is. It is. Look at this. Hmm. Wonder what that unlocks. Keep an eye out. Hostile radio intercepted. It's the fucking division. Roach wants everyone back at headquarters. Roach. It's a beast. It, it is a... It is so fucking steady, man. Yeah, yeah, you can, OB. I just got it the other day. I got it from uh, Countdown. Yesterday, I got it from Countdown um, Exotic Caches. The vault's just up ahead. So, yeah, in, in, it'll drop in the open world or in Countdown if you're farming, um, I guess, LMGs. Oh, I knew you were going to do that. Don't mess with my mojo. Classic M1A would be behind you. Curious? Maybe we'll pick that up just to test it out in a little bit. I've been wondering about that. You know, if we can get that thing to one hit wonder with uh behind you on the classic what kind of build can we get away with fucking division got into the vault it's cool we moved the president he's tucked away nice and cozy upstairs yeah damage to elite is a thing of the past agent you've got a new assignment find out where the president if you watch old videos you might find it featured in old videos but yeah it's a thing of the past Div 2 had it too. Division 2 had it in uh, Gear 1.0. So, title up for up to, I think, title update 6, maybe? 4 or 6. But yeah, that was a long time ago. You wouldn't recognize the builds now. Oh, I didn't charge all the way. Come here. Fucker. Activated charge transfer. Dizzy. Dizzy. Come up. Get 
Give it to me. Ooh, well, why do we don't even need the nemesis on those guys? Might be from the damage buff. Well, we hit him at 6 million. That wasn't very strong. I think that's base damage. God damn it. Their special ammo sucks. It really does. That one bullet in your insta dizzy. I know I had your head there. Uh, I'm pretty sure I backed up. Searching for way out of the vault. Zero matches. Piece of shit wristwatch. Yeah. Second of most through the west wall is a maintenance tunnel running alongside your position. It's a long shot, but it's the only one we got. Yeah, Benitas, I made a, a pretty cool one. Maybe last season, the season before. You can get the uh, M1A to chain kill. It's sensitive, though. Uh, which makes it not that great because... Before. Because um, you were pretty squishy otherwise. And so sort of like, yeah, I might as well just run to 1886, right? But now with behind you, maybe we can... I don't know. Have more fun with it. Load on some more armor on kill. Now that we have Palisades, we don't need two pieces of Brazos or something. Charge compromised. Oh, it's probably a med kit in there I could use. Hello? Yep. How do you use med kits? There it is. <laughs> is anybody else do that you don't use them enough so you forget which which direction on your directional pad it is I, it literally happens to me i'm not not kidding because <laughs> i rely on armor on kill and regen and uh, mementos a lot you know so sometimes i overthink it and i'm like wait which which direction is it on the pad i'm a dork though so we all know that right Come on, President Ellis. Yeah, I don't like the health thingy. God, I, I I don't even want to think about it. It kind of makes me mad that there's health and so much health in the game. I don't even want to think about it. It's like how lame. It's like jokes on you, Division community. For years you've been telling us to take away health, and we're gonna give you more. And so at first it makes me think though, because they did that with the memento. Okay, so for for months or a full year basically we were complaining about the rainbow drops. And then they delivered the memento. <laughs> that like in the in the heat of it all, not just you know, randomly, like at the peak of our frustration with rainbows, you know, they delivered that. And it was received. It's not like they didn't know. They were actually uh, adjusting drops because of our complaints. 
And so they were in, uh, decreasing chances of rainbows, but then they deliver their ultimate rainbow. It's like, you fucking guys don't know what you're doing. And they were kind of right in that instance, right? Because in the memento, it was like, oh, yeah, rainbow's amazing. And then Hunter's Fury came up too, which is basically one giant rainbow, if you think about it, from what it provides. I guess I'm done. Am I done? No. Hostile radio intercepted. Well, that's a load of shit. Kill every last one of those. Well, it's not that we didn't know what we were doing. It's just that the game at that time was so... We were pretty squishy. We had to be because the enemies were so... Uh, the game wasn't balanced well, and so we were so, so underdogish, you know? We still are, of course, but it was worse back then. I mean... Let me tell you, you know those New York missions or whatever, some of these missions that I'm playing like right now? I mean, like, this used to be hard. This used to, used to, there used to be like a, a point like at the end fight here that we wouldn't complete it. It would take like, you know, we'd all be hiding in the room and grenade, they're launching grenades at us and shit, you know, like when it was invaded. And like, it was hard, even not invaded, right? It used to be hard. This is all mostly before legendaries existed, you know? These missions were as hard as it got. And it was actually hard. It was like you felt really squishy. Your armor was breaking. You had to run an all red build. And somebody would have to play a tank. And, you know, pure ro pure rolls. And now it's we just coast through it. And it's not because of determined, right? It's We got added elements of survivability that give us much more sustainability in gameplay really self-sufficiency is probably the right word really Ah, it's with the gas, man. It's not going to feel good for you or me. Oh, did that miss right when he jumped. Ah, I hate you, lady. Ah, it's hit me. Ah, speaking of which. All because of the stupid Russia. Come here, you. you suck. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about you. you. Mess up my flow, man. Good old blind fire, I'm telling you, it does save your life sometimes. Against that boss. 52 million right there. Wow, this that's the event buffing it. 54 million. It's to kill off of the boss plus the event. That's quite a buff that they give you here, huh?
No. Okay, so three activities, a control point. We definitely have to do a control point. Let's take this one. What's the gear here? Ugh. Damn you, electric. Damn you. Yeah, when you're running directives and switching from mission, in and out of missions can be annoying, huh? Missions to open world, missions to open world, because then you lose your ammo. You kept it coming out, though. That's good. Purple! What up, man? I am running 100% weapon handling, 20% armor on kill, one shot, kill build. Sniper. So it's around the stats. And so we got 100% weapon handling here. And it's an updated version from what I built in season 11, I think it was. Uh, when they first came out with the Ninja backpack, whatever that was. And then because of some of the updates, we're able to pull in some other interesting things, such as another 10% armor on kill because they give us more weapon handling out of our, uh, what you would call it overlord. And then I'm also able to not have to run the weapon handling scope to get to reach the hundred mark. Not that the hundred mark is important. 95% is also good, but before we were running no scope, which we could still do, but I like the scope actually. The eight X scope seems to be a nice balance. I wish we had something else, you know? And something to auto zoomed in even less. I would take it. I mean, that's the problem is this is an auto and then you'd have to click, which would be annoying. I mean, maybe, I don't know. Let's give it a whirl. Maybe it is nice having the option to do both. Thanks, Knock. Knox, appreciate you, man. Okay, I'll do that next. Wow. I hate those little cars. So you can zoom in. It's got a better reticule than the 8x scope. Oh, but after it reloads, that's annoying. You see that? You have to click in every time. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, we don't like that. Damn you. Nice, guys. medical assistance needed. Just launching perfect grenades and shit. What's going on there? What's with the fucking grenades? Oh my god, I'm getting tortured back here, man. I put two shots dead onto these ladies. One of them was for sure fully charged and it didn't kill her. I don't get why not.
Double jumpers, huh? Ah, that was it. That was it. I can't see her. I hate those ladies. This is why I hate the hyenas. They're the, like the worst enemies. They're down there fucking around. Yeah, that looked right. Let's get this and we'll change the cord too. Supply room access unlocked. All right, so two out of three activities. Oh, we got to replenish. Okay, you. Let me feed you something. If you have some time, you can always use some more supplies. No, nope, not enough. There it is. Okay, I'll put it uh, here. Then I'll try not to activate the buff so we can see what our damage is. It's the first shot that really is what we want to look at. So we were hitting at 12 million before the Nemesis. So what number is this going to be? No, she's wearing a helmet, so it's kind of a pain to test against her, but... We want an elite. 9.2 on him. 
14 on her. But that's not a first shot. Let me get rid of it. We need an elite. These guys aren't going to provide an elite. Sniper back there. Sneaky. Well, that completed all of our activities. It's weird. Said we had two activities to go. I'll take it. It's been doing that sometimes where it just it counts something you don't expect it to count. Oh, did they count? I didn't look. Okay, gotcha. No, I'm not running the Achilles Pulse. It's not a bad idea, but directives would probably be kind of annoying. But the other thing is, I don't know about you, but I, I don't have good luck with the Achilles Pulse. I always feel like I'm doing it wrong. Because <laughs> there's people that like it, and I just don't get how you can like it. It's so inconsistent. It makes me feel like, am I doing something wrong? I mean, I even tried it with six directives, putting on a six directive sniper build, and I, <laughs> I was still, and, and overcharging it. I was still disappointed in that thing. It's like getting it to land, because your first shot has to be on the head. It's not about damage. It's about a headshot. It's got to land on the head. So I need that damage thing to be on the head, too. Because after the first headshot kill, I'm chain killing everything anyway, anyways. So I don't need the Achilles. And since I'm at my cap, 1,250% cap, um, it wouldn't scale. So I always feel like, like, I don't get why, where people use it and find a community. Now I get it in like a speed run strategy or like a raid. I mean, I get that. Okay. <laughs> No, I'm not going to crush that M1A, no. No, purple, they didn't. They did and they didn't. So it, that's confusing. I get it. Yeah, it is. So there's basically now two versions of determined. The perfect determined and the regular determined. The perfect determined is the one they quote unquote fixed. So yeah, it's head body, head body. Regularly determined is you can body all day once you activate it. Okay, let's offload the stuff we don't want to trash. Yeah, which makes things a little bit confusing, but either way, I'm glad we still have regularly determined. But as I've said in the past, if they decided one day to put it all the same head body, head body, I wouldn't bother me. I think it's okay. Head body, head body is pretty darn good. I when it was like that for a while, because you know how it was like it was like that for a while. They did make it so they both were performing that way, and it was so you you you're still pretty consistent, you know, and fast.
Oh, I was trashing it. Thanks for that. Good call. Okay, let's just go into the testing range real quick and just get our damage there because um, I want to make sure the game mode's not throwing anything off when I'm out here. One of the other things we could do, it's it's tough because we don't have a lot of spots here, but it would be cool to see if we can pull off another piece and replace it with another armor on the kill thing. Now, again, if you're playing from cover a lot, then you're not going to need that. But the downside is we don't have a lot of pieces to play with. We don't have a lot of pieces to play with because Habsburg is giving us a lot there. <laughs> it's a lot coming out of that Habs. And Bellstone's already there. And then if we can't get rid of Hotshot. That's a lot too. And then we have to have two pieces of this and the Ninja's bringing it all together. Oh, I hate when you don't have ammo in the testing range. I mean, what's that about? This ammo crate, you should be able to tap into it. I mean, what? We have to turn on the directive to test in here? Well, at least we got that. <laughs> okay. So let me do the pistol. Put this on. So it's really the nemesis that we're testing, right? We know the rifle is going to be able to pick it up. But we'll, we'll test both. So let me load this up. Okay. So the, we need 9.8 million. That's 10.3 something. So that's with 1.1 million armor. So now if we switch, we need 9.8 million. And we're at 18 million. So it works with one point with 1.1 million armor. So um and it's got about 500,000 overkill, so we can let's try putting on um a one protection from lead. So we're basically I'm going to power down to defense up. Now that we why is that changing? Is my mods full? They are. I don't know how they're full. I feel like this new mod system is not saving me any headaches. <laughs> I deleted a bunch of mods the other day too. That were Look, a manic. All right. What were we doing? Oh, changing the mod. So we can put protection from elites. That'll help us uh, be more resistant and sticking our head out against bosses. I didn't see that damage. Let me clear this. It was enough, obviously, but I, I need a number. 10.6. Ooh, the non-crit. That's pretty strong. All right, tw switching. Obviously, this is going to be over 18 or 17.5. So, yeah. So, but by doing that, you might be taking away your one-shot boss skill capability. We were killing bosses in one shot. So, because we dropped uh, the further away from 20 million on that second shot. Let's see, we're going to stick it. We're going to stay uh, close to that. Uh, I can't see that number quite. That. Yeah, 18.7. So we're about 19 million. So we look, with this setup, when we, were, when we were all red, we were hitting 20 million. So with this setup, we're hitting 18. So we still got room to put on more damage to targets out of cover. Or protection from elites, really, is what I mean. But, like, what if we get rid of Habsburg real quick? Let's just give that a a try, because I'm, I'm curioso. So let's put this on. And then let me put on a... What if we put contractors here instead? Bear with me for a second. It'll make sense in the end. Because, see, that gives us 15% uh, weapon handling. And then what if we put on, let me see where my stat is first. So we're at 115. So if I break 30, lose 30. So we're talking, hold on a second. 
because we got a lot of overkill, so I'm trying to bring that down because the Nemesis is our, our Kickstarter here. So that's the damage we're tracking. And so what I'm looking for is another armor on kill. And it's got to, the both of the stats got to make sense. So, um, basically, Uzina Getica, which I know I have. The question is, is it here? Here it is. Okay. Now, the problem is, is that it's on the, let me see what I got over here. Because I can move the Picaros anywhere. I mean, sorry, the hot shot. Oh, my names are all mixed up. So what I'm going to look at doing is getting rid of the overlord for a second. Yeah, I don't have all my holsters here. That's a problem. So hot shot is stuck here. Yeah, for now. Okay, well, let's test it the way we were going to. So I can put um, Uzina here. So we got Uzina, this. So that gives us... 85% weapon handling. Okay, yeah. So there's going to be a loss in weapon handling, but we still got so much, but we care, right? That's kind of the question. And so then we can run like a Habsburg here, pick up the damage there. Or actually, now let me think that I if I have my Bellstone here, I could put the Bellstone on the chest instead. Are you here, Bellstone? Please be here. Yes, you are here. Our version of you is here. I feel like I have a better one. All right, I'll take that, though. I wish Palisades would go on this build, but then we're unlocking health, and I don't want that. <laughs> okay, so... If we put Bellstone here, then that frees up the... The mass. Let's see what I can bring in with that. With that. Nothing special because I don't have anything. But I do have a red Habsburg. Probably have a hot shot there, but I don't have another replacement holster. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, all my gear is all over the place right now. Because I'm working through my characters. Anyways, well, we got incoming repairs now. <laughs> so let's put on, um, I guess, Habsburg here. Back. Back to Habsburg. Uzina, Bellstone. So that's 30% armor on kills. So that's, that's good. Let's see what our damage is. So I'm going to leave that mod off because that's going to tell me if we have enough. So. Wow, 11 million still. 11.4. That's because the, the contract is bringing the damage to armor. And then... Is that what that was? Let me double check. That wasn't a crit, was it? 10.4. Yeah, so it's about the same. It's a little bit of a drop because we were at 10.5 before. Uh, that's interesting, though. So the loss, we did take a loss in something, though, and that loss was in weapon handling. So that's hitting at 19 million on second. So damage to armor picks that up a little bit. And then if we want to peek it out to over 20. All right, well, let's go play with this and let's see if we like this version better. And so that's without headshot damage there. So now I can uh, know I can put on protection from leads comfortably. And we still got the 1.1 million armor, but now we got 30% armor on kill. So should we test it with more armor?
Okay, wait. Let me take off. Well, we already tried that. I was going to say I could put back on the double overlord. Yeah, I might as well. Let me do that here, actually, real quick. This is actually kind of interesting because you can have damage to targets out of cover with damage to armor now, which is actually a nice little boost. So we lose 10% armor on kill by doing this, but we pick up damage to armor, and it's probably something we don't need. Because look at our, this is what it does, is it pushes our weapon handling higher. See, we're at 115% weapon handling now. We don't need that much, but let's see what the damage number is so we know. It's 10 something. It's probably, yeah, I can't tell. It's 10 something. So not enough to, right home the mama about 10.3 there it is so it's less damage but we pick up extra weapon handling which we don't need so that's that's the thing hmm so i guess the Xena is the way to go let's put this on i mean it depends on what you're looking for but let's see so what i'm looking to do is see if i can feel the difference in the drop of weapon handling to give us more resistance. Because uh, you can see that bleed is painful when we get hit with that. So to make it more directive resistant. Okay, so you don't need to optimize those, but I'm needing to spend some points somewhere. All right, that's cool. So let's go ahead and throw on another protection from elites now. So I'm powering down. Oh, God, I got to delete another mod to do that. Yeah, I'll just do some shock resistance, apparently. Yes, I know. Give me the manic. There it is. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to taste this before we head out. So we're pushing the limits down. 9.6. So that's not good. Lost a million. I might not have held it. Let me do that. Yeah, that's, see, see that? That mod changed that. Put this back to headshot damage. Try it again. Now we got enough there, but I thought we had more of a buffer than that. Huh, weird. It's fine, but I thought we had more of a buffer. All right, well, we got it. So, well, I got expertise on mine. Maybe I should play it safe for you guys. Put this headshot damage back on because you, you're not gonna have expertise on your nemesis maybe as much as I am. So I should probably put headshot damage here back. You know what I mean? Oh, I see, I got the wrong chest piece. No wonder, sorry, my bad. Never mind. let me put this back. <laughs> I was like, I thought we had more of a... Yeah, it's because we were running this. All right, let me um, optimize that while I'm here. Actually, I'm not going to. Yeah, okay, 10 something, 10.4, whatever. So that's good. Okay, as long as we have the buffer, then that'll make it safe for if you don't have that kind of expertise, then... Just play it in the middle. What up, Weez? We're playing around with weapon handling and... Um, I guess non-meta snipers. With a non-meta build. It's a ninja build. So, basically... Uh, playing around with, like, close to 100% weapon handling, but trying to build in more resistance. So... Uh, earlier we were running 100% weapon handling with one shot kill and we were killing bosses with a single round at 20 million and so we pulled it back down pulled the damage down a little bit so that we can bring in more resistance excuse me because one of the reasons why is like this build will shine uh, when you're playing with lots of directives and one of the purposes of the build is for those who 
are really good at sniping and want to play aggressively, then this build is great. Or if you're new to sniping and you want to get better at it, then this build will help ease you into it with the extra weapon handling. But it's really nice, like when you got a rusher and then you with with a helmet and you land that first shot and then you quickly get that second shot right behind it. It's almost like the bullets are following each other. That's how fast it gets it. So the helmet breaks and that second bullet is already in their forehead. It's nice. That's what that's how I like to use these kind of builds is to be able to uh, play quickly and minimize switching weapons and play really close. But for uh, people that aren't comfortable with sniping, then this type of build will be really handy just for flat out landing shots, even if you're sticking to one spot and playing from distance. And then the resistance is like for a new player is to play, I mean, for an experienced player to play more aggressively. For a new player, it's gonna allow you to spend more time out of cover to you know, hone in on that shot. So 10.5 million. Okay, I'm gonna not do a cover to cover so I can keep from the buff kicking in here. Okay. 16 million second shot. So then from here, we have determined and you can kick ass. Agent charge compromised. And so you'll be able to clear content really quickly and you got a ton of survivability. So that's the thing. It's not just killing quickly, it is Kill fast, heal fast. All right, we can play into our buffs now. Get off me. Jesus Christ. Really? That foam is horrible. And so that's the kind of shit we want to survive, right? So we probably won't be able to shoot this boss, but well, yeah, I mean, I probably had a buff right there from the uh, game mode. I mean, it shows I have a charge, but we probably should be hitting at about 18 million without the buff. So the buff gave us an extra kick in the pants at the end there. So yeah, I'm, I'm testing things. So that's why you see me doing stuff like this. Like uh, I'm seeing how well the handling is at 85% to be on the move and take this shot. And for those to really be accurate, you want to be inside like 10, 15 meters when you're on the move. Otherwise you're gonna have to pause real quick. So like right there. I heard a voice. You're creeping me out, lady. Where you at? The hell? Ghosts, man. Oh, there's somebody up there. I'm liking the 8x scope integration, I gotta say. Mouth breather. I love seeing the lightning in the distance like that. It looks so cool. Got her. On the roll. So that was without a buff, it looked like. 19 million. Yeah, that's our true damage right there. 
So yeah, the closer to 20 million, the bit more likely you're going to shoot that one, that name boss. But it'll depend on the boss a little bit. And if you got a helmet guy, yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, so we did a good, we did a good job, guys. I think we balanced it out. So lots of more ways to pull in more damage if you're looking at it. Really easy to do that. Take off some of the armor and kill. Take off some of the armor. Put back on headshot damage instead of protection from elites. You can, um, oh, that's weird. That must have been a different name, boss. Um, what was the other thing I was going to think? Oh, the scope. You can put on more headshot damage with the uh, 45x scope and sharpshooter. You can go sharpshooter. Sharpshooter would actually give you more damage, too, because... Ooh, exotic. Because uh, it's actually going to give you headshot damage, too. So, another holster. But, yeah, so the real question is, how does it feel? And it feels pretty darn good. <laughs> it's well-rounded, you know? It's well-rounded. And I think it offers some uh, differentiation from hotshot let me talk this one out so because hotshot's pretty good right hotshot's great and so i think that's one of the questions on any high performing balanced sniper build because hotshot's pretty balanced right it brings you armor on kill and and bonus armor and even reload right oh you whoa There we go. <laughs> uh, but one thing is you wouldn't be able to get as much weapon handling on the hot shot without really losing a lot of its damage. Um, but the difference in hot shot is really one of the big things is that it requires that you don't miss. I mean, like not even air shots. And so, which is just going to happen, right? I mean, like. That's the thing. So determined and hotshot work differently. Where a hotshot counts air shots as a miss and determined doesn't. And so determined is better when it comes to what what's counted as a miss, what's not. Hey, where's this stupid thing? And so I feel like we're getting all the benefits of what hotshot would deliver with more weapon handling and more straight up armor on kill whether we miss or not. So we're getting 30% armor on kill off the first hit, where if you're running hot shot, you'd have to have three consecutive hits in order to get your armor on kill. And then you'd have to maintain uh, chain killing at that point. And I know that sounds easy because you're thinking, well, determined. Yeah, but air shots don't count. <laughs> so if you miss a shot in the air, then you start all over and you might not ever get your armor on kill. So you could land one, miss one, land one, miss one, land one, miss one, and never get your armor on kill. Or your damage. Uh, I do, Rob. I do. But I'm actually running the Model 700 with Brutus. I'm not... So there's no run, there's nothing wrong with the brute. I'm sorry with Brutus uh, with behind you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's an amazing weapon. It's great. But what I'm finding is like what I'm looking for is like well, where, where does Brutus fit in my loadouts? Where does all behind you fit in my loadouts? Because my weapons are only one shot killing. So why do I need more damage? I don't. In a lot of builds, they don't. Except for the strongest sniper. So that's why I felt like well the model 700, it maintains a good spot there. Uh, it makes sense for my Model 700, that talent behind you, because that's one that is has the ability with that talent to one-shot chain kill or one-shot an elite right out of the gate without a headhunter. 
And so that's where it stands out as special to me. But it's amazing. Other way, uh, the weapon, the Brutus itself, is a great weapon. But for me, like I'm, I like the model set, the M700 with just um, preservation or determined or something like that because it's got such a big mag. I kind of want to make make use out of it. But for the talent, yeah, it's amazing. It's a good talent, and it's a good gun. And so I just think that it would have been better on the Model 700. Like, the perfect talent would have been better on the Model 700. Oh, man. No if, ands, or buts. I'd be a happy camper. So I'm using the non-perfect version. Fucking right, bum. Been doing that a lot lately. Ugh. Oh, and it got me with the fire. See that? I see the sequ sequential shot there? That's because of the weapon handling. It's like wham, wham. And so it's the helmets become less of an issue because of the weapon ha high weapon handling. There's a boss down in one shot again. So that's without the buff. So we're hitting at 9.9 .9 or something like that. And that's what the uh, that's a, the power down version. So we found a good balance, I feel like. And uh, more importantly, it's it's not that it's better than Hot Shot. It's that it's uh, differentiated from Hot Shot. So you would have a reason to love your Hot Shot build and potentially love this one too, depending on your play style. And I love Hotshot. The only reason why you don't see me running it a lot more is because of the glitch on the decoy. And I really, I really, I'm a, I'm a decoy believer. <laughs> I donate to the decoy foundation. Really, Og? I gotta check that out one of these days. Probably too much. Come here. Hey, he stole my kill. Stole both. Come here. Oh, I hate that armor break. I swear. It's like the worst talent. Specialized, whatever you call it, directive. Oh, you're right in front of me. Come on. It's always her, man. <laughs> God. Let me fix my armor. God, those foamers, man. They don't play by the rules. First rule of being a foamer, don't foam tux. isn't helping me out either. There it is, killing the boss, nine point nineteen point seven. Yeah, so we're consistently one shotting like that. I haven't seen rogues today. Surprise.
Supply room access. Locked. Yeah, the fog, man. I, uh... Yeah, I just deleted a bunch of stuff, too. It was pretty painful. But with Countdown being there, I'm a little... And with as long as I have good resources, I'm a little less worried about it. Before, it was more of an issue because... Um, you know, I was dealing with, you know, some mostly an advanced player base. And so unicorn pieces weren't as much of a big deal back then. But now that we have so many new players, unicorn, some unicorns are a little painful for new players. They see that unicorn and they're like, oh, my gosh, no way. <laughs> so I kind of try not to make unicorn builds. Some of them are. gonna be avoidable not gonna be avoidable like the strongest sniper build i mean you're gonna have to have a red habsburg you know just if you want the strongest one so some things you strive for but also they're good you know to know what the max potential damage is i you know some people get upset by it but i don't you know if i see a unicorn build personally like and i don't have it i'm like i get it like so if I don't have that piece, my damage is going to be just a little bit different, you know? You don't have to copy people's builds, like, exactly. You know? Like, it's okay if one piece isn't the same, you know? And, yeah, there are some builds that just won't work if that piece is not a red core, for example, or something. But the reality is most builds, like, if you're running a striker build and... You know, the guy's got is showcasing an all red striker build and you know, you don't have a bellstone that's red and so yours is with a blue core, like who cares? You're just still gonna kick ass. You know, you're gonna kick a lot of ass. But some people are really upset some. They're like, oh build is trash, it's a unicorn. It's like, geez, no, it's not, man. Like it's cool. It's like it's fine. So you don't have that piece. So your damage is gonna be a little bit less. It doesn't make the build your your less damage build worse and also you should have something to look forward to you know what i mean some pieces should be should be hard to get and things that you hope to get right you need something to look forward to I mean, that's part of the fun for me. Like, I like, like, oh, my God. Like, I remember, like, when the Virginian was one, you know. That's a long time ago, obviously. But, like, the Virginian was, like, when I, when I saw the Virginian and what it could do, I was like, I want the Virginian really bad, you know. And it was hard to get. It was basically a unicorn. Because we didn't have the named item capabilities we have now. We didn't even have global events back then. So there were no red stars to farm. There were no named item caches to buy. It was dark zone vendor, so my the only way for me to get the uh, Virginian was to farm the dark zone. Uh, either way, I was farming the dark zone. I had to wait until the um, vendor had it, usually. And I had to make sure I had enough uh, credits to buy it. All right, this is going to be fun. Things have changed, man. And so, anyways, my point is, is like, also, is that deleting things with Countdown, I feel less stressed out about it. <laughs> you know? Reinforcements incoming. Oh, uh, look at Mr. Foam here. Oh my god, did you see that hand? Oh, you got me anyways, though. 
It's a bad time to be reloading. That reload was crazy. Ah. Serious trauma detected. Let me recover. God, I hate armor break. How many times am I going to say that in this stream? circle around fucker that was sneaky that was very sneaky <laughs> oh my god that fucker you see what he did he swung around the wing i forgot there was a door there Yeah, shoot him in the leg. That's the way to do it. That's right. I mean, and it's funny, like, I find... Obviously, it requires setup in advance. The thing is, like, sniper builds are interesting to me, and... You can argue this in, in either way, but, like... If you're used to running them and all sorts of content, then you have, you have a play. They're plays. You're making plays, like in basketball. You know? And... So for the dogs, like when you're taking on any th mission with the Black Tusk and you, you see a dog come out, then you're like, okay, he's a priority. That dog is the priority. Because if I don't shoot him with one shot, then he's annoying to kill. But I have the ability to take him out with a single bullet, making it the best Warhound killer build in the game. Unless I fuck up, right? Which happens, and it's annoying, <laughs> right? It's annoying when you fuck up, and you're like, oh, damn it, now i got to put, like, 16 shots into him. Which isn't a big deal, except he's always running around. The, the one with the Gatling gun is annoying, the minigun, because he runs. And for a sniper, it's hard to shoot him in the leg when he's running. <clears throat> but with a determined build, you don't have to shoot him in the leg. You can shoot him anywhere. I tend to shoot him in the leg anyways by habit. But... Yeah, so that's why I like sniper builds because they, you know, one bullet take out tanks, one bullet take out warhounds. And there's, in most cases, like 90, 99% of the cases, is, there's NPCs that come out with the warhounds. But every now and again, there's a mission that is pure warhounds, and those are the worst, you know? And that happens in the, in, um, the summit, too. Like, the summit has some rooms, and they, they'll throw, like, two Warhounds at you and nothing else, and you're like, damn it. Okay, okay. It's that armor again. They didn't give me any new armor kits. Did you notice that? Because I traveled to a safe house. I mean, a um, control point. Who's the guy that owns this thing? Please be him. Oh, way over here. I'm sure you dropped it off and ran away like a sissy. Oh, great. Great. Can't see. Can't see. There it is. Cause they're coming out of random holes, aren't they? It's everywhere. I'm trying to sneak up behind me. And they're really accurate today. <laughs> I think they're confident with their special ammo. Charge exposed. Oh, that's right. It's because they got their 65% extra damage. I forget about that. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta be careful. So that's how, that's why those punches hurt. I wonder if that is affecting the bleed too. You think it's affecting the bleed? Like, are, am I bleeding harder? Probably. It's basically like glass cannon is what they got, right? 65% is like glass cannon. the boss again hey, 
Yeah, so every now and again we get a shitty uh, directive setup. I feel like that's what we got right now. It's a bad combo, right? The special ammo with armor break sucks. I don't mind Pistolero so much. I think I like it. On sniper builds, I like it better than armor hoarders. Because you're in control by just switching through your... Switching through that pistol of yours. What hole are you guys going to crawl out of? Oh. If we could run Palisades on this build, I would. <laughs> the only problem is the health thing. I mean, I should probably try it just to see. Even though I'd be annoyed that there's health on the build. But the 511 gloves. I mean, the only other piece would be... System Corruption. That would be a winner. Because in one piece, you get 15%. What? Fear mode, yeah, I'll show you it here again. Because I'm going to change it to... Oh, speak of the devils! How lovely for you to join us. Rogue agent detected. Oh, I didn't release. Tucker. Charge exposed. Haha, <laughs> through the windshield, fucker. Oof. Standing still, huh? I think he liked it, though, at 23 million. There it is. Rogue agent eliminated. It's a beast. Supply room access unlocked. Yeah, system corruption is a good, a good one there. Instead of PAL, too. It's a great alternate to PAL. I just feel bad because a lot of people don't have that, you know. It's just a corruption. But you can get it right now, right? If you're playing this global event, you can get uh, Legacy Season Caches, and that's how you get it. I'm on the fence on whether I'm going to do that or not. I'm looking for the knee pads, but it's so specific. It's like, oh. Uh, I'm also working on other projects that require me to invest in exotics, right? Because I'm trying to see by the end of the quarter. And I haven't been playing this event very much, so I don't have very, very many stars. I mean, I'll be lucky if I get three uh, caches. <laughs> Exotic caches. I mean, how many do I got? 60. Yeah, so I got three, but lucky if I get four, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been enjoying the event. I just haven't been playing it. So, first time I've enjoyed this event, really. 
Okay, so here's the build so far. It's got 30% armor on kill. Sniper without sharpshooter. So uh, it's peaking at about, without crits, at about 9.7, 9 9.8, I'm sorry, 19.8 million. So it's been uh, one shot in bosses using the SRS when you're at full stacks. Um, it's built around weapon handling, actually. So we have 83% weapon handling, 123% stability. And interestingly, I got a lot of different things going on here. So brace yourselves. Um, so it's the ninja bike backpack is critical to making this work because it's unlocking things. And so I got headshot damage there. And that's one armor core. And then we're running the contractors for the damage to armor, but also the 15% weapon handling. So that's why I'm running that. So it's a twofer. And then uh, Uzina Getica for the armor on kill. I'm not sure if I'm settled in on this piece. I mean... We need the armor on kill, so I'm not saying we don't, but would I be better off with system corruption down here? Probably. <laughs> well, just for 5% more, probably not, right? So, you know, I'm going back and forth. Uh, but I'm, I'm about to test Palisades on this. And then here's the other 10% armor on kill plus 1% armor regen. And on this one, we got protection from elites. So we damage tested this out. And so the idea is to be able to chain kill uh, right off the bat to be able to kill an elite with your first shot using the nemesis and then you switch over to your srs or whatever you're going to use for your primary and then take over and so the first shot coming off of this is at about 10.3 10.4 million in that ballpark now i needed the overkill you only need 9.8 but i needed the overkill because i have expertise on mine and you might not have the same level of expertise on yours so I needed to overkill to make sure that I could say, hey, if you don't have expertise, then, you know, you got the overkill damage buffer in there to play around with. And worst case, get rid of your protection from elites. Um, and then if you have to step it down even more, then, you know, get rid of the armor core, I guess. So we got head headshot damage, marksman rifle uh, from Habsburg. So making use of that. And of course, headhunters vital. And then one piece of hotshot for the 30% weapon handling. So all of this is really built around weapon handling. And then I, we had it originally at 100% with 20% armor on kill. And then I backed it out to give us, was it 100% armor on kill? Yeah, I think so, right? I'm sorry, 20% armor on kill. I think that's what we had it at. So I changed it to bring it, to make it 10% armor on kill. I can't remember now. Yeah, that's right. Okay, sorry. I got that's all sounded mumbled. So we were at 20% armor on kill with 100% weapon handling. And then I reversed some things to turn it into 30% armor on kill with 85% weapon handling. And then ran it like we just did. And we and we added armor and we added protection from elites to see if we could tell the difference in weapon handling. Not really. You know, so so I feel good about 85% weapon handling. So I'm running Gunner. So because the build is designed to run five directives, you need an answer for your ammo. And so either Sharpshooter or Gunner for ammo. So Sharpshooter also gives you ammo. But Gunner gives you 20%, I'm sorry, 10% armor on kill. So that's part of the armor on kill equation. So we got 10% armor on kill from Uzina, 10% from Bellstone, 10% from Gunner. So 30% armor on kill. Now you can see I play pretty aggressive. I'm running around like a crazy person. So if you're not doing that, do you need as much armor on kill? Probably not, you know? And so, but 20% uh, or 10% is fine. If you're playing from cover, really 10% should do you just fine but 20 percent is also nice <laughs> so you know but if you have extra damage what are you gonna do you know so once you surpass being able to shoot a boss with a single bullet which this build can do i think we were shooting one boss right did we can't remember now 
it's all being mixed together. We're going to have to run another one. I also want to test this with Palisades and push it to 40% armor on kill. Now, the downside about Palisades is it picks up... Um, some health and we lose a lot of damage so let's just see what happens here so what i can do is pull uh this back into headshot damage but this would give us 40 percent armor on kill it's just kind of interesting 10 20 30 and then 40 coming from gunner but it's probably going to be too weak so but let's just go test if i if if I'm if my first shot with the nemesis isn't killing, then I'm not interested, basically. <laughs> Personally, you know what I mean? It's not worth the the effort. Yeah, Chonky, it's a colorblind. That's right. You got it. So we're playing it, but so I'm testing the limits of certain things. And then ultimately what I do is circle back and think about the logic of the build. Not for me, because for me, the more aggressive I can play with the build, the better. But for a build to produce in the community, I'll think about the logic and like, well, who's this build for, you know? And how are they, How realistically, how are they playing, you know? And there's very few people running, running and gunning with their sniper. Some do. Especially with determined, it becomes at all much, uh, much more, even uh, reasonable to do that. But it's still not ideal um, to run again too much, scopeless. Okay, let's see. Is this gonna hit? Well, I critted, so <laughs> it's not good. Let me waste it. Okay, let's try again. That was pretty high for a crit, though. It was 11 something, so. Nine point seven, so we're just shy. Hold on a second. That's close enough. We might be able to get it to work, though, to be honest with you. Okay, let me try again. charge okay, she's in cover so we need damage to targets out of cover to be kicking in here oh perfect grenade Sorry, I'm trying to pick my target. Uh, I need an elite target that's not in cover. Oh, that sucks. I'm going to kill him. Uh, okay, clear. He should be fresh. He might be in cover. Yeah, he's in cover. Chicken shits. I need a decoy. She might still be considered in cover here. Yep, she was. Really? Fucking perfect grenades, huh? Somebody get out of cover! Really? Fucking A. Okay, you guys finish those guys so I can find some elite brave enough to get out of cover.
If they're out of cover, they, it should be hitting at least 9.5. Yeah, he's in cover. So if they're standing behind cover, it's annoying how the game considers them a cover, but not us. Okay, there's one. Oh, I missed his head. Get out, get out, get out, get out. There we go. 9.5. Yeah, so we're pretty close. I only need 300,000. You know, um... The only way to do that would be... Yeah, there's a way. Um, I don't think I have the piece, though. Needs to be a. I need to take off that armor core. I'd probably do it. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go for it though. But it's interesting to know that we're close. It's a, that'll be a different build. I just don't like the idea of wasting that slot to health. And, you know, with Ninja Bike Backpack builds, I, every slot counts. And although, you know, health isn't the... It's it's really not the worst thing. It is a little bit of survivability, right? So, if you think about it that way, I mean... It's better than... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's better than status effects, I guess I would say, right? Like, status effects would be worse. Something like that, you know, but still we don't we don't really look forward to putting health on I don't look forward to it It's mostly like even if you You can survive and recover and get your health on kill stuff. It's it's a lot of it's about player confidence and there's when you lose your armor, it changes your your behavior. When you're just down to your health, you're probably, if you're most people, <laughs> you're probably not playing as aggressive when you have no more armor. You know, you just probably start tacking it back. And so, there's some armorless builds that used to be pretty good in this game, right? We had the bloodsucker builds that were based off of health. You would run no armor. Armor wasn't very valuable back in the day. Not that it's super valuable now, but there were day there were there were builds that were based off of health, and as long as you were critting, you would stay alive. Those were the cl perfect clutch builds. Um, but they're just not that powerful anymore. To do that, you just it doesn't work. I don't know, has anybody seen it work since the update? It'd take a lot to get that to work. Supply room access unlocked. Hostiles guarding location nearby. Oh, I love the Mantis. Mantis is one of my favorite all time. All time. But, like, notice I'm using the 8x scope. Like, I really enjoyed that. We could use the Mantis on this build. and no, no problem with that. But it would take away from the Nemesis, you know. And I need the Nemesis for that first shot. So we can try the Mantis on and see what happens. But the ne if I go uh, ne Mantis, that means I need to run Sharpshooter to pick up. If I'm not one-shotting with the Mantis, I'll need the Sharpshooter to pick up the TAC-50. Which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. Obviously. It's your normal go-to. A little bit of a restructure. So let me fix this build real quick. So we don't want Palisades. So... 
We have the Habsburg. Belsum. So I think we were running Habsburg here. But I'm going to pull back. So now that we know we can do this, I'm going to strip it back. Okay, so hold on. And the, again, I'm thinking about most players aren't playing out of cover. So that's why I'm stripping it back. Not because it's not good. But most players are going to be playing from cover. So I'm going to go back to the Overlord version. And we'll test with the Mantis too. Uh, but that's why I'm reversing the build. And then the good news is with that, we'll be able to put on some um, protection from elites, I think, because I think we're gonna have too much damage. We had a lot of overkill in this situation. So what's our uh, stats here? So we're at 115% weapon handling. So that's too much. Okay. So I can put on instead of contractors, we can put on our Uzina here. I think that's where we were, right? We had at least two blues and one protection from elites. That sounds right. We'll test our damage. Um the mantis is gonna curveball it, but We'll test it with the Nemesis too. So let me just make sure that didn't screw up our stats. So we should be at 100. Yeah, so we've got 100% handling. And that's 30% armor on kill with protection from elites. So I think that's a good build. So let's just go do some damage testing. And we'll swap into Mantis too. So I'm gonna uh, start with the, the the nemesis just to get a damage test, and then we'll switch to the mantis. There's Danny right there, huh? Think he's refilled? Has anybody checked Danny today? I don't think I can look at you play very easily, right? Don't I have to like go outside of the game to do that. Not in Sniper. Yeah, Lavo, that's a really good question. In Snipers, it's different. So because the buff is... The main buff we're worried about, we're talking about here, is Chain Killer. And Chain Killer's on the build, not the weapon. Hostile control point detected. And so we're using the Nemesis or the TAC-50, or your stronger Sniper, basically, to activate Headhunter to its peak, which is 1,250%. And then we're switching over to the covert so that we can. The only reason why we're switching is really so for determined. That's why we're switching is so that we can run with determined. And then we need another headshot to turn on determined. Now, once you do that, you're stuck with the SRS until you lose determined. But if you switch out of the SRS, then you'll lose determined. Yeah. I like this backpack better than the other one that comes with the suit. Those the armor plates on the back are sick. In case I need to armor up. Okay, so what I would like to test is, can we one shot a boss here? But it depends on what boss they send out at me. If they send a helmeted guy, then that sucks. So that was 9.4. I don't know if I did something wrong, but we need to make sure that we're at 9.8. So this might not have been the 9.8 version. If it's not, then I'm going to change it. Okay, well, she died too little damage. Let me finish that guy. Okay, so we need him to be out of cover to know. Ugh. 
There we go. So I was looking for a body shot so I can... Oh, you don't care? We don't care about you? We need an elite. Charge compromised. So if we hit at 9.4, we need. it's really vital we get 9.8 out of this. And so... I can't remember. I think we were hitting at 9.8 with this, so I just need to be sure. I think we were hitting at 10.3, so, but I might be crossing the builds. But it needs to be an elite. This purple guy's not working for me. There's one. making this easy to test there we go god they keep climbing that's a hard shot there we go 10.9 on crit damn it we don't want to crit we waste it sometimes they're paying to test that's why it's sometimes it's easy to go in the lab huh Another crit. Oh, there's nobody left. You guys suck! Reinforcements incoming. Detected. Charge compromised. Ready for you. It's gone. You're going nowhere. Stay out of PC. Stop climbing shit. God damn. Oh, you too? Good. What's up my testing? Might as well, at this stage, might as well just go in the fucking shooting range. See, the perfect target, but now I got a stack, so I got to waste the stack on something. There. Now he's in cover. Let me just go to testing range. This is taking too long. Yeah, show your damn face. Let me just die because it won't let me fast travel. Mr. Laugh? I don't know, Rob. It, it seems to be that he's he's varying, you know? So one week we only had one 
exotic then and then the next time we saw him we had two exotics so there's a little chance to it a little variation but yeah probably still some time it's easier to just test in here okay Oh, uh, we've got to take off the ammo thing now. Just to make that easier. And then it's going to give me a loading screen. It didn't always do that. Do you guys remember when you could change your directives in the middle of a control point or whatever? In the field? Yeah, his times were funky, and then he ran out of stuff. <laughs> okay, so the question is, was this the one hitting at over 9 or not? 9.5. So, not. But it might have just been that mod. So let me put this back on. And then I think I remember saying, oh, you know what? We should put on more of a buffer. Yeah, let's see. Damn it, crit. Stop critting. 9.4. It's weird. Took off that mod, didn't I? Okay, but that's what it is. All right, 9.4. So that's not enough. So 20% armor on kill, I think, is what we're going to want. So the version is, I think, the better version. Because it'd be nice to have 30% armor on kill, but we don't really need it. I think the better version would be. I think the bell zone here and then Habs here. Um, I can increase that, but we're okay. And then I think this one allowed us to put on the protection from elite. So instead of 10% armor and kill, oh, we were missing a mod the whole time. <sighs> Seriously, dude. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. Go back to that. Ten percent headshot damage does make a difference. Okay, so here we go. Back to the thirty percent armor on kill. Nine point seven. Ooh, so close though. Wow, so close. I mean, you could take off one of these weapon handlings. We got so much weapon handling that that could be. That could be the one. Um. For example, down here on the foxes, just play headshot damage there and play and we'll be at 90% weapon handling. Let me see if I got those already. And then we'll get our cake and eat it too. We're playing it in the middle, I guess is what I'm saying. There we go. There. So now we're at 90% with 30% armor on kill. And so we lose the protection from elites. I'll try putting it back on, but I'm not sure we'll get it. But 92% weapon handling. And this should this should take us there. Let's try it. The problem is I have expertise. So I need that number. The higher the better for you guys. Ten oh six seven is what that is. So I mean that's a sweet deal right there. Um we could take off the blue. see what that does I 
I mean, I'd rather have armor on kill than uh, an armor core. So let's see what this is hitting at. So like 10.4 would be good. Okay, that's 12. That's the crit. Oh, man, sorry. It happened so fast. I have to do this a few times. It's 10 something, obviously, but is it, it might be 10.8. Should be good. Anything over 10.4 would be good, I think. 10.6, maybe? Okay. Maybe let me try to back it up. Some eyes. Yeah, ten point. Let's call it ten point six. It's something like that. So, and then when we switch out here, obviously that's going to go higher. Um, Seventeen million. So, yeah, I think that's the build. Ninety-two percent weapon handling, um, and then we got really nice stability coming off of this. So again, you see what I'm saying? So I got twenty percent expertise. So I was trying to account for that. That's why I took off the blue. And I guess I could put two blues back on to offset it to see what it would. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I'm trying to think this how that power balances out basically one blue here would be what the damage was so an all red an all red with basically no expertise on your nemesis should be hitting like whatever that original number was nine ten million ten nine point eight million nine 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 whatever it was can't remember now but uh with the difference of only five percent weapon damage so uh, which would be the difference between 15% expertise and 20% expertise because of the red core. I I don't have that dissident, unfortunately. It's only PC players. I wish. I do wish I had that. But I like that, that balance that we made off. We took just a little bit of uh, handling off. And then let me go to the other version uh, that we ran and we were pretty happy with too, which was um, basically what was it? Bellstone chest, contractor's gloves, and then Habsburg. What were we running for the knees, though? Maybe Uzina? I don't remember now. Gosh darn it. All these versions are getting mumble jumbled. Maybe it was. Yeah. Let's see what that's hitting at. So this is the one where we were like, well, it's a little bit less handling, but yeah, 10.4. That's... That's a good one right there, too. That's 30% armor on kill with 85% handling. And, yeah, this is that one. Yeah, those are both tough choices. But the reason why I backed out of this one is like, oh, you guys don't need 30% armor on kill. Yeah. I did just put out an LMG build the other day. Uh, I think it was a GR9. If you haven't seen that one. Yeah, but we have a whole workshop to do on LMGs. I'm just trying to get some of these builds out of my out of my um, loadouts. Because we've been working on this build already. and I, So I have to put out this build. and I, I can't put them out back to back, though, because I don't want to put two sniper builds out back to back. But... I got this one in the strongest sniper one. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'm just thinking that between the two, probably 20% armor on kill. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be the winner. It, this is really appealing to me, but I know I just... Not enough people play out of cover to need to 30%, I don't think. So th that's... I keep going back to that. So it was the... Bellstone here, I think, is what we were... And then up here was the Habsburg, which we got. So that's, I think, the build. Let's just test that one last time here. Make sure I'm not losing my mind because I keep going around. Yeah, so it's strong. Okay. 10 6, I think. So that's enough buffer for the weapon ammo. 10 9. That's 11 million. That's 11 million first shot. That's the build with protection from lead so then i could say hey if i got 11 i got a, a million one extra damage here uh and so if you don't have any uh weapon damage expertise on your nemesis then you should have the buffer but if not take off the protection from elites <laughs> that should do it and then that's cool that's cool that's a, got a nice shiny 92% weapon handling, but we could probably flip this back to 100. Either way is not a game changer. So I think it's just going to be down to what happens when you don't have expertise. What is your nemesis hitting at? So, yeah, so that's 10.6. So by adding, and now we're at 100% weapon handling. And so for me, the reason is like this, this build was one shot in bosses. So hold on, let me get that number. It was hitting at 20. It was 19 something, but that one's saying 17. Maybe it's that protection from leads that took that away. But my point is, like, if I don't need any more damage, then I m might as well put on more weapon handling or whatever else you want. Uh, armor regen. Um, skill haste. If you're running a fixer, you could put duration as a mod and move one of these to headshot damage. So it's a flexibility there. No, you don't have to be a mad scientist, Mr. Walker. It's just that some of us really get into it. It's like when you discover the builds and all the different ways, the mad scientist part of it, if that floats your boat, then this game, it never ends because the devs every three months, four months are giving us more gear and then we get into three or four months of more experimentation. And then by the time you get through that, then they deliver more gear and you're taking some of your favorite builds and you're bringing new twists to them. So sometimes it's like just literally powering it up. It could be that linear because they give you a better option or they give you a stronger sniper or they give you a stronger assault rifle with better DPS. And then, or sometimes they give you something that allows you to like have an easier way to get armor on kill. So we have that now. So a lot of our, builds that we've been using for the last couple of seasons can now carry uh armor on kill with this palisades piece where we were having to put on two pieces to get that same armor on kill. we used to have to run two bell stones but now we can do it with one palisades so that frees up another slot to put on either more armor on kill or more damage if you want to so now you get the same survivability with more damage and so you know, so some stuff are pretty straightforward that way. And when you're new, it could all be seem kind of overwhelming. I get that. But, you know, either way, even if you're not a mad scientist and you don't get really into builds, you still have a lot of tinkering to do, which is fun. And it's not complicated. It's like, hey, I've got this really good build. I'm running these two pieces because it gives me 10% armor on kill. And now I can do it with one piece. What am I going to do with that other piece? Well, it's up to you. 
you know more damage that's cool or more survivability you know but usually on many of these builds what's really neat is that we already got like really high damage so you know real like killer dps as good as it gets and so more dps i mean is nice but you know if you're clearing district union arena in 18 minutes and now you're clearing it in 17 minutes and 59 seconds i mean do you care because that's what that damage did for you <laughs> you know what i mean like for me no you know but for some yes you know for some it's not about about whether it changes their performance or not they just want to make sure they have the strongest build equipped and even though they're probably still going to finish district union arena in 18 minutes before the change and after the change even though it didn't actually change their performance they don't care as long as they have the strongest build and that's not a that's not a bad strategy because it ensures that you're maintaining your power with whatever new introductions that the devs bring so it maintains your equilibrium with the enemy so it's a, it's a perfectly reasonable strategy to do that it's like i i need to make sure it's the best because you know the devs are going to throw in more you know uh status effects on us or something like that which means i'm going to have less time shooting and so that little extra dps is going to help with that one kill you know and that's true it's true so it might be in the weeds where it plays out you know that little extra dps and for some builds maybe they didn't have the dps and now they do have the dps to to make them um more formidable builds to run in legendary where before they weren't so so yeah there's a lot yeah so you know my point is you don't have you don't have to be a mad scientist to, to make and have good builds and the devs have been trying to make it easier and easier for new players and that's what the gear sets are about it's just like, hey, the truth is, is like sometimes it can be presented like, you know, you need a spreadsheet and a calculator. And if you don't understand how amplified damage is, is working, then you're an idiot. I get that. You know, I know that some people present things like that. But the reality is, is that, I mean, this is what a lot of people know that have been playing this game for a while. Like, if you want the best damage build in the game any four pieces of striker or work and who gives a shit what the other two pieces are run the shittiest assault rifle if you want to <laughs> you know what i mean the reality is is that you're good enough you're good enough you know and i just did a run the other day with a level 30 watch in legendary with a makeshift striker build on day one of a new account and came out a beat a level 7000 guy you know and so obviously skills there and i'm not actually a new player but my point is is that it doesn't really matter what your stats are on your striker build you know we argue like oh you're gonna lose too much damage if you put armor regen there oh you're gonna lose too much damage if you put skill haste there but like too much damage for what because four man legendary is about as hard as it gets in this game and you can run it you can go in there with the shittiest striker build you can possibly put together and there's enough amplified damage on that build that's all the damage you need you know and so the reality and that's what the devs intended that's what they wanted that's and so it's it's ridiculous to argue over the little minuscules of amplified and extra amplified crit damage you don't even need that crap anymore they're doing it on purpose you know they're do they're doing it on purpose that's the point of what everything that they're doing the the they're making it easier to slap together builds and you can't really do it wrong i mean if you're running a four piece striker build and you're not running the contractor's gloves who cares you're gonna do fine you're gonna survive you're gonna pro maybe even take the lead in kills if you got the skills you know and if you're running fox's prayers you're gonna be okay you're not gonna be okay doesn't matter you know you could be running the best the literally the highest dps build in the game and come in with the last the lowest number of kills and damage you could be right you know you could be putting on the strongest best dps assault rifle or smg and come in last in kills and damage you know so it could go the other way is my point you know what i mean but the point is is like you know any four pieces of striker you're okay whatever <laughs> but there's no fun in that and that's why 
and that's why we don't just throw it out there like that. We like we like to get into it. We like to we want to, the tools. We want the build that performs the best. We don't want to go running around with junk builds. Who wants that, right? Uh, weapon handling. Well, weapon handling, remember, is more than just ability. Um, so weapon handling, um, it's a good question. But weapon handling also handles weapon sway. So watch the weapon sway on the nemesis. So this weapon has a notoriously horrible weapon sway. So that my hands are off my controller right there, uh, except for the trigger. So I'm not holding the thumbsticks. But notice there's no weapon sway. So the nemesis is really bad in a weapon sway. It literally goes like this. You know, um, so there's that. And yeah, it definitely matters. So when you got a sh uh, your first shot out of cover and the targets far away, then that weapon sway is a big nuisance because the enemy isn't literally just standing there like this paper target. And then also the reloads. Look at that reload. Right. So the only thing. So when you're chain killing. Or there's a bunch of scenarios where weapon handling helps here, but I'll give you two. So when you're chain killing, the only thing that stops you from chain killing is when you run out of ammo, your mag, right? And so then you have to re then you reload, then you to stop that chain killing. So the faster the reload, then you can gives you the opportunity to pick up that next target before he goes back into cover. Okay, that's one situation when you're killing hard. But where it saves your life is when you have that rusher coming at you and you need to take one shot to pop her head and then you throw out that second shot out there to kill her when she's in your face. Both shots out there when she's in your face. And so part of it's the reload. So the reload affects your rechambering speed, which they never talk about, but it does. And the other thing is actually landing that shot point blank, basically. But it flat out helps you land that shot whether you're in and out of cover. I mean, this is the this is the crazy thing about Division Two sniping, is that even with determined, I miss a thousand shots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I'm going for center mass sometimes. You know, I like to go for the head a lot when I'm running determined. Not every time, but you know, I want to keep my skills up. So if you always go if you always go for the chest then your sniping skills degrade. And when you're not using determined, you'll see that. So I try to go for the head a lot anyways. But I, the reason why I still like determined even when I'm going for the head is because many times they have their hand in front of their face and it's you hit that hand, it doesn't count as a headshot. But And then the weapon swap. Oh, I'm holding this right now. But uh, the weapon swap is crazy. Look at that. So, but it's a good question. It's a good question. So weapon handling might not be your thing. So then the question is, well, what if you're already one shot killing everything, what would you put there instead of weapon handling? And that's the part that, and there are, there's answers to that. You can put skill damage and put skill and make a skill build, right? You can put skill tier. So we have those builds too. But the, what I've started to feel lately as we, get stronger is i'm feeling the pressure on the at the availability of um attributes there's just not enough attributes that make sense so it kind of comes down to well like what would i use i mean a little bit of armor regen well no because i'm killing so well i might as well take the armor on kill i'm cool with that but you can put armor regen instead of weapon handling but then that's up to you what's more useful for you the weapon handling or the armor regen well, it's going to come down to your gameplay, right? So if you're out there killing a lot, then you might not need the armor regen because your armor on kill is probably going to be okay. And you'll find, you'll find that you're always at full armor. The armor regen is not really there for you. But you could put on more protection from elite, so you could peel back. So there, there's, there's different ways you can take it, right? And I don't have the right answer. 
We have all of those builds. I have a protection from elite sniper build. We have a skill sniper build. We have a 100% weapon handling sniper build. We have an, an 80% armor on kill sniper build. We have a all red hotshot sniper build. We have a six skill tier sniper build. We have a tip of spear sniper build. You know, so we have them all. I, I even have a Hunter's Fury sniper build. You know what I mean? So what you do is you take whatever formula and you peel it back and you say, well, I don't spend that much time out of cover. So if you spend more time on in cover, what would be maybe better for you? And it could be you might look at uh, Sawyer's knee pads and maybe explosive resistance because perhaps the only way the enemies can get to you is with those long range explosives. Right. If you're playing in the back and in cover a lot. And so you might be attracting drones and grenades or those tanks and their horrible lobbing explosives you know so so it's not so i always kind of look at it like i mean it's the, i know i know it's hard to get just sometimes to see the viability because some people it's an option i guess is the best way to say it because i don't prescribe to that there's only one sniper build in the game that you need this is the only sniper build in the game you can have you're never going to see that as a title to my video the only sniper build you need you know the only striker build you need you know i i just don't believe in that like it's just you need one build and that's it um i mean it's just other people do many people do probably half of you listening here do it's just like you have your your one build and that's your favorite build and it's the only one you're going to run maybe because you don't log that many hours into the game and so you don't have enough time to to spread your love around to other builds because you know you just don't have the time so you're going to lock into one build it's your favorite build you really enjoy it and so you're just going to use that one but for me like i like to present and even use different variations of every build right so we got tank dps builds we got all red dps builds we got uh healer uh combat medics right self healer medics we got true patriot builds builds that give your team uh what is it two million in bonus armor <laughs> you know what i mean like all, all, and then we have uh crit foundry builds and we have tank foundry builds and whatever and none of them are right and none of them are wrong you know but it's hopefully what they do is they inspire oh wow i never thought about that and maybe when you're tinkering around with your own foundry build you're like, I'm going to try something different. Maybe it's not what I did, but it, maybe it sparks a different idea. But yeah, it's a really good question though. So yeah, it's it's like you can, you do that a lot. And uh, those are the types of questions that you want to ask about your build though. It's like, hey, if, if I'm not spending that much time out of cover, maybe weapon handling doesn't make, it, make that much sense for me. And this is a really high amount of, of weapon handling. And part of the re reason why I'm running it this high is to show simply that you can. Literally, that's the only reason why I'm running 100% weapon handling. And I can run more, right? I can run at least 15%, 20% more. I can run 20% more. So if I put on the contractor's gloves and then I put on the weapon handling scope, I'd have 20% more weapon handling. So... The point is that you can have your cake and you can eat it too. That is the only point of this build. So if you want the weapon handling, you can have it. If you want the 20% armor on kill, you can have it. If you, can, if you want your protection from elites, you can even have that while you're one-shot chain killing elites and heroic with all directives. And you got an answer for all the directives. You got armor on kill. You got resistance with the 1.1 million and the protection from elites and you know you got the fast killing which is also a defense really and then you got the ammo regeneration on top of that because of pistolero so then you so this also has an answer for directive so it makes it a good xp farm build but if you weren't and so that's why i'm trying to think about most players so for me i'd even push this even higher around the armor on kill but I know most players are going to be playing from cover. So it, it goes, it caters exactly to your question, which is, hey, if I'm not spending much time in scope, do I really need that much weapon handling? And it's sort of the same thing. So I'm saying, well, most players don't spend that much time out of cover while they're sniping. So do they really need that much armor on kill? So I'm asking the same question, right? And so, but I have a purpose for this build. It has to have 
high weapon handling because that's the actual point of the build. Now, whether Joe and John, two different players, want weapon handling, well, that's, you know, Joe might, John doesn't. So John might say, oh, you know what? I'm pretty good. Uh, I play from cover. I'm comfortable with my sniping. I don't need that extra weapon handling. It's good to know it's there, but not for me. Where Joe might say, well, like, I'm not good at weapon at sniping, but, you know, I'm interested in getting good at it. So I'll take any advantage that I can have. And 100% weapon handling obviously gives you sniping advantage, right? So from everything that we talked about, reload speed, weapon swapping, actually landing your shots. And so am I beyond a point of diminished returns? Absolutely. Absolutely. But the the point is, is that the, the problem is with diminished returns in weapon handling is that it's somewhat subjective, you know? So because it depends on, I guess, that play style that you're catering into. But, you know, 65%, 70%, 85%, we saw that 85% was pretty good. So for me... I could drop down to 85% and be just as happy, you know? And so, but it goes back to what I was saying earlier. I'm feeling the pressure on our attributes. I feel like we need more because I don't have anything that I'd rather put on. And that's why I'm staying at 100. Because, I mean, I need something else. I need something. What else is the game? I mean, I don't want to put on explosive resistance for the heck of it or hazard hazard protection for the heck of it, you know? Because a little bit of hazard protection doesn't doesn't, doesn't feel good to me i either want to be immune or not in most cases you know with hazard protection i know that's an all or nothing mindset but with hazard protection it's just like it's either you know you die from it or you don't you get you killed or you don't you know and so riot foam does get me killed many times when i die with my one shot kill builds it's usually because i get in a really bad riot foam situation it's usually why i die or I miss a ton of shots, you know, um, where weapon handling is, is a good aid for that, but hazard protection isn't. And so when it comes to riot foam, you're either immune or you're not, or you're really close to immune. So there's, there's a level where you're not immune to riot foam, but it will instantly break on its own. And so it's, and it's like, I think that's like 90% uh, in snare resistant. And so uh, where immunity might be something like 94, 95%, I can't remember exactly, but um, but so if I'm not 90% in snare resistant, I don't want to be anything in snare resistant <laughs> because it's likely going to get me killed or not get me killed. Right. This is going to be that black or white scenario. And so I feel like we need more attributes. I want more attributes in this game. I want things like, uh, flinch resistance, you know? So like when you get shot, your body doesn't shake or sh screen shake resistance. Like how annoying is it? to have your screen shake when somebody is running a mortar turret or explosions to come with you. Wouldn't it be nice to have that be a thing? Or um, what if you could hold your breath or run faster, you know, things like that, or more reload speed straight stats, you know, or whatever, you know what I mean? But something different, like, I'm just like, I'm looking at our attributes and it's just like, well, for snipers, you basically got weapon handling and headshot damage. <laughs> you know? And I just, I'm feeling the pressure on these stats and I feel like I wish that we had more options. And that, so that's where, where with sniper builds, I, I have skill builds and then I have uh, damage versions and sometimes I have something in between but you know logically here i don't see the point of putting any more like anything else here based on what it needs how it's performing but yeah and so they're, they are bringing some of that stuff in weird ways right we're seeing it in gear sets or the gloves i don't have them here right now but the new gloves is a perfect example of them bringing it in a weird way the uh the iron grips or whatever they're called so they give you weapon handling but only when you're doing it is something stupid <laughs> you know and that's like ah <laughs> omg it's my big pet peeve too man oh it winds me up too well body flinching actually is what i want to say body flinching is so annoying because there's no counter to it and either with screen shake either 
but it's annoying like when you're standing point blank and the tip of my rifle is at the butt of somebody's cranium you know what i mean and i pull the trigger and it's counted as a miss because i'm taking shots you know what i mean it's like i that there's no way that was a miss that my gun is is pressed against his head i can see the dent you know he's got the burns <laughs> he's got the the muzzle flash burn on his forehead and and they counted as a miss you know oh that irritates me so much and there's nothing we can do about it that's a good question king i don't know i never tested it don't you throw sr1 at me crazy don't you throw sr1 at me i don't have the sr1 don't you throw that word at me <laughs> it's a great gun it's a great gun. I've been looking for it. So I'm looking for it. I know. And I'm not getting it. Lamo was his Nemo. <laughs> yeah. Or when the enemies are launching grenades at you, too, explosions at you too, right? Like, there's that. The Tusk have that habit. You got to catch it in between earthquakes, right? You throw out a shot in between earthquakes. Oh, Lavo, no, that's exactly like that in Xbox 2 on console. It's annoying. And so uh, there's a relationship. I feel like there's a relationship to your RPM on how fast the enemies move. I was saying that. Like, if you watch when Golden Bullet kicks in, do you ever have that feeling that the enemies can run faster when there's Golden Bullet? So you get the Golden Bullet, and all of a sudden the enemies are, like, sprinting faster than ever. It's just like, well, so I'm shooting faster, and they're sprinting faster. Yeah, I really got to get my hands on that. I need to refresh my mind, my experiences with the SR1. I guess I could try crafting one, right? Can you craft one? Yeah, I guess you can. I just haven't gotten one with the right stats. I need the talent to be flexible because I want to try it with um, behind you. And whatever. So as long as it's got the right lineup. Damage targets had a cover on it. Damage armor is not the worst. I'll save that one. But damage to targets had a cover is just a higher stat. That's why I want, want that extra few percentage. So I can compare it. Yeah, the reload is the deal. It is. It's slow. You're making that choice when you pick that one up. Uh, we were talking about it. That's one of its big differences. That's might. I don't have the stash piece here. That might be the difference between um, the White Death in the Model 700 and why you would choose the White Death. So the White Death can reload uh, from empty using a mag where the Model 700, even when you go to empty, it's going to single reload all the way up, and that's painful. But it's got more rounds. So you get more rounds and more damage out of the Model 700, but the White Death, when it goes empty, it's a quick reload. It's tactical reload from empty, basically. So it's unique that way. And the Model 700 has got a different setup for mods too, which I kind of like. I like being able to put on this uh, this Omega, even though it doesn't actually make your shots as quiet as they should be. It alerts enemies just like anything else. I wanted to see this what this one was doing. Hold on a second. God damn it, Damien. Uh, you guys have no idea how much I get bumped into around here. <laughs> so annoying. So uh, we have the foxes, so we at least have that going first. Let me see what this does right out of the gate. Not bad. 
I mean, obviously, with the M1A, you wouldn't need the weapon handling. So that's interesting. That just hit at $7 million. So if we put on the contractors... And then we put on maybe Providence here. And then let's put on headshot damage, I guess. I mean, Providence wouldn't make sense because of the backpack. Hold on a second. Actually, I don't even think we need the ninja with this. Hold on. Let's put on um, Providence in the backpack just to start it out. And then... Two-piece hot shot. No, Habsburg is good. We like Habsburg. So the chest needs to be ha no Walker on the chest. Habsburg on the chest. Let's run that real quick, and then two pieces of hot shot to get the handling, and then that first kill. So you still want your nemesis to hit hard, right? So. It see how this goes wow it works ten million I don't even have mods on <laughs> That's without mods. And what do we got? Uh, yeah, it's not God roll all the way either, but so that's what behind you. That's what we're testing is the behind you on the rifle. And so obviously you have to land ahead, but this is a lot easier to land ahead than, I mean, this makes it a designated marksman we were talking about earlier. You're like, oh, we're missing that class. This would make a designated marksman and you wouldn't have ammo issues. Oh, we got to build this one out, don't we? Hold up, hold up. Tux is excited. So you have to go with the head. The action, you know, you're losing determined, but you get some rapid fire capabilities in there, don't you? Hold on. So it's a rifle determined build, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not saying determined. Uh, Behind you. It's a rifle behind you build is the point of it. So not determined. <clears throat> Although we can do that too in a different build series um, because that is it. With, with Project Resolve, we would want to see if that's something viable. So that's with weapon handling down there. That's interesting, huh? And there. And so obviously we'd want to add damage. So let me put on the memento because we'd want to be able to move with this one. And then let me put on a blue Habsburg. And then let's put on some just regular headshot damage here. That's got that there. And then what does this got down here? So we got a lot of weapon handling on this build still. These are all weapon handling pieces. So let me see what it's, but we just, we should have powered up, but we lost the vigilance. So let me see what happens. So we lost some damage there. What do I want to fix? Do I have foxes with headshot? Yes. Um, it's really the nemesis that we need to fix. We want to hit harder. Or, obviously, when we have the Tech 50 up and going, we can try that one, too.
Okay, putting on headshot damage on the gloves. So there's a 20% left, I think we just did. 10.7. Yeah, it's not enough. Wow, we changed a lot, apparently, huh? <laughs> Damn. What was it that we changed that made it so... Took away all that damage. Guess it was that. Doesn't seem right. Weird. What up, nuclear? Um, I'm not sure. There was one from a long time ago. It was an article. Uh, so I don't know. It was it a new one or an old one? I appreciate the donation, by the way. Yeah, there was one um, about a year ago, right? Or 10 months, 11 months ago or something like that where he was talking about those things, but he might have did another one maybe? It's a new interview, huh? Yeah, I'll take a look for it. So let me see, I'm on the division website right now. You sure he wasn't just uh, referencing a very old one? Yeah, because earlier he, um, the one from a year ago, he referenced that there's going to be something that we're, uh, we'll be grinding for that we've never, different than anything that we're grinding for now. I'm curious on what that is. You know, like, is it going to be... Um, Something to do with the arm badge? <laughs> I hope not. Is it going to be boots, a helmet, you know, a sixth piece of something? Something like our watch, right? The watch was a game changer, didn't you guys think? It was a game changer in so many ways, right? The resources part, too. It's a very a nice tool for our resources, but it definitely powered us up. Yeah, I'll take a look for it and see if I can find something. Appreciate the heads up on that. Thank you. Did they update the roadmap? Because I, I only I still see the same old roadmap. I'm looking at it now.
Let me uh, go somewhere else just in case. So I'm looking at his website. I mean, his uh, Twitter account right now. See if there's anything posted there. I see one from April 20th. Yeah, I mean, it's not even on Google. It's the last one I'm seeing of him is on April 20th, 2023. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll look for it a little bit deeper. sure it's out there yeah yeah sometimes the news channels can be a little bit tricky you know and it's tough that's a tough area to be right in the game to cover news because we don't always have news and so sometimes they'll drum up a topic like you know they'll build up something in the past just to start a discussion which is cool you know right have a discussion about oh what are we going to see in new york in brooklyn right well this is what we know from the interview a year ago so it's not news but it could be news to somebody who missed that article a year ago so it is helpful to bring that back up to the surface because we have so many players that are just not joining the game and they don't even know <laughs> about the dlc right people ask like hey is it a good time to join the division two and or is uh, my son and I were thinking about playing? I, you know, I got that comment the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, absolutely, great time. Probably the best time to join Division Two now." I mean, like I gotta say, probably the Division Two is in a better place now than it was when it freaking launched, when Wony launched, right? Because it's just like everything is here now, and there's still little bugs here and there, but don't. There's no way there wasn't bugs back then, right? I, mean, I don't remember, but I'm sure there were bugs back in the day <laughs> but so you know the bugs are just there that's part of the games it sucks agree um i mean that the delivs aren't aren't as fast and, and as consistent in their deliveries and i wish that would be uh, a little bit better and, and so do they right but i feel like the game has more breadth now than ever so if you're a new player or a returning player it's got to feel pretty damn cool you know what I mean? And we don't have that luxury because we've been, I've been around forever. So it's just like, it's all a big progression and like, oh, we've done that mission before. Oh, we've done that game mode before. And we've, we, it's just another season with gear. But man, if you're a new player, oh my gosh, you got Descent, you got Countdown, you got Legendaries, you got the Summit, you got PvP. You know what I mean? And it's just like, what do you hate? What do you love? So much to explore. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they haven't even broken into builds yet. Shit. You know, they're still working on their watch. It's a cool time to be a part of the division too, I think. Like trying to say that as objectively as possible. And so I put out a post uh, on YouTube the other day in the community section and we got a lot of responses, like over a thousand votes. It's that one that said, hey, are you a returning player or a new player? And then please comment your impressions of the game in its current state of season three. And just to see all the comments are really interesting because I'm going to do a video on it and be like, hey, this is the feedback from the community on where the game is. And for a, for a new player, 
this is what the new player and returning players are saying. So if you're potentially thinking about coming back to the Division 2, or if you're a new player, this is what people are saying, you know, about the Division 2. And it's it's I'm not asking veteran players for a reason because we we have a di- completely different perspective. Is you're not going to get a, a same answer, I don't think. You know, oh, it's the same old shit, you know. <laughs> What was it? I saw this comment the other day. Oh, God, it was a funny one. Um, oh, yeah, it was a tinkering system, right? So everybody's like, I, mean, I don't know why you guys are still playing in Division 2. You got the, the tinkering system is just a recalibration system with a different name. <laughs> it's like, that's what you took away from Project Resolve? <laughs> Holy shit. And by the way, the tinkering system is an absolute game changer. I love it. Oh, my God. I love it. It is a game changer, but, you know, I guess it's a matter of perspective. But, like, you know, when we're – think about your Woni runs now, right? Your new character runs. Okay, let's just take that because I've been doing that lately. And so – oh, appreciate your nuclear. You rock, man. I'll check that out. Thank you. So if you um, if you go on your – take your new character to New York and you do a run-through, remember every time you got a new piece of gear and you're like, oh, I'm going to take this. Now I want to optimize it or recalibrate it. You'd have to go back to Haven and do that. But now you can do it on the fly. You can progress your build as you go. You never, ever have to go back to Haven. You never have to go back to Haven and you complete a new character run through. You, you start in Haven and you never have to go back there. You know, the only reason why you would go back there is to craft. But you don't really need to craft anything. Maybe one time, you know. So it's pretty cool. That you can tinker now, right? You don't ever have to go to base operations in your entire zero or 31 to 40 journey. And you might even be thinking, well, what about when I I need to go out to my stash? Well, you can do that at level 37 when you're unlocking Wall Street, right? You just prepare. Okay, I know in three levels I'm going to be facing Keener, so let me pull that gear into my backpack. Now that I have to unlock the safe house anyways... There's a stash right there. So you never have to go back to Haven. So tinkering is a game changer. It's amazing. They did a really good job of tinkering. And I look forward to more changes like that. But that's just one thing, obviously. But for for new players, it's all the same to them, right? So for new players, it's more about, hey, what's the quality of the game and the story at this stage? It's five, six years later, guys. You realize March is year uh, start of year six in this game. That's insane. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point, Lavo. Yeah, there's some things that I just don't have visibility on, you know. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I started a new account to see what you can get cannot get, but there's so much in the in the um what do I want to say, the domain progression to teach that I barely have time to even I have never I haven't even gotten to my own collectibles. <laughs> on my main account like i haven't even had time to review i don't know what i have and what what i don't have you know and some people are really into that right as you say as you're pointing out my former collectibles are apparel i gotta say that's my collectibles you know is mostly apparel and i like i don't even have all the backpack trophies because there was a lot of global events that i didn't participate in and so because i was like stupid hollywood <laughs> you know something like that but yeah my former collectibles in this game has always has been the outfits most of all but yeah there's all sorts of uh story things now like like i haven't been paying attention to like the summit or the descent collectibles right there's that whole series and you can unlock pieces of the story and i'm into the lore so it's not that i'm in, not into the lore because i do find it all very interesting i love this storyline but Time and priorities, I guess. It gets the best of me sometimes. You don't, Destroyer. You don't have to talk to Rosa Benitez. You do it right when you arrive. I mean, if that's what you mean. So, yeah, you arrive You arrive to New York. You take your 10 minutes to, it takes to get to Haven. And then you skip. You basically can skip that intro story where there you, you go into his office and he yells at you for a minute. And then you come out. 
and you talk to uh, Rhodes and Benitez just to unlock them. So that gives you access to your specializations. You equip it. And then you go over to Benitez and you activate, you talk to him to activate this, the vendor. But the vendor, if you're going to do it in a single playthrough, doesn't change. So you look at the vendor. Is there anything worth buying? No. Then you never, you never, you know, you buy something or you don't. doesn't matter. You never have to go back to him. You still might. I'm just saying you don't have to, you know. You might. You might be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go back for that mask, you know. Or I'm going to go back and change my specialization now. I'm going to switch up my build. Totally, totally. I don't think so, Hunter. Sadly. I mean... It was a big move for to see the ravenous and the eagle bear go into dark zone, but that thing it's it's still pretty hard to get, and that's why they did it. You know, um because that game mode is just not well populated, so they're they're trying to drive more traffic there, and so they were hoping that would be a reason to do it, and it is. I think they did get more traffic because of the eagle bear is now there. But um it's still pretty elusive, right? Anyways, um, the Ouroboros is behind the incursion for a reason. It's so that it doesn't die. <laughs> you know, and, and same with the summit. They want you to say, they want you to try it at least long enough to get your Ouroboros. And then you may not ever play it again, but some people will. And so the Ouroboros is going to get them in there. But I just, I wish they did. You know, I wish they would. Um, perhaps in future seasons replace the exotic? I mean, how hard would that be, right? Ouroboros is now in the regular loophole. We now have a new exclusive exotic in that slot. I mean, why not, right? I mean, I think, uh, I think that would be even smarter because those people like me and many people in this community, you're like, yeah, we've been there, done that incursion. Yeah, I'm not going back in. <laughs> we, got the, we got what we're looking for. It doesn't drop loot. I can't go there and farm. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, we've already beat it like a hundred times, you know? So I don't need another Ouroboros. I don't need to go back in there. It's fun. But you have to coordinate, you know, hey, do you want to run the uh, incursion with me? <laughs> you know, hey, do you want to run the, you got to find three other people willing to run the incursion with you, right? And that's hard or easy depending on who you are and what time it is. Are your best buds on at that time that you want to play it? You know what I mean? So, but if they put a new exotic in there, let's just say they said, hey, the Regulus can now be achieved from completing the incursion. How many of you that already have beat the, uh, the incursion would go back in there to get yourself a Regulus too? Probably a lot, right? Because there's a lot of people that have done the incursion and beat the incursion that haven't done Iron Horse. But I think it would smart be smart for them to rotate some some of those other exotics, even the eagle bear. Add that into the incursion. It would be smart to do that. I mean, they all, they all said everybody was like, "Oh, you can't put the eagle bear in the dark zone. Nobody's gonna do raids anymore." And the same people are raiding. It's always been the same people raiding. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they weren't doing it for the Eagle Bear. They've already had like a hundred of them. You know? Oh, that reminds me. We really got to do an Eagle Bear video, don't we? Yeah, we really got to do that. I keep forgetting about that gun. Anyways, folks, I'm going to call it a night tonight, and that way I can be fresh and work hard on this video for you guys tomorrow. Uh, good stuff, man. Love the, love the questions you guys bring up. Venom, thanks for the heads up, man. Appreciate you. I'll check out that video, and then, yeah, if there's uh, some new stuff there, we can talk about it in a live stream. Yeah, that's usually how it is, right? Destroy your words. Like, it's the same people here. Same people, you know. That's that's cool that people carve out their communities, right? You know, some people love PvP, and they're always going to love PvP, and so on and so forth. And they you'll, you'll notice that. there's very Some of those PvP guys, 
they very rarely dabble in PvE. I mean, I had some friends that they would log in every week and all they would do was raid. And they would come in to the chats and they'd be like, hey, what's up, guys? What are you doing? You know, and they'd kind of see what you're doing and be like, you know, but they're really, they're just waiting for the next raid. And so they were seeing who's, who's ready to raid. You know, anybody want to raid? I was thinking about, you know, and that's that they didn't play anything else but raiding. And if they were playing something else, it was just because they were waiting to raid, <laughs> you know, and it sort of has to do with the social aspect of the game. They're like, they're here to socialize and play, even though you don't socialize too much when you're raiding, but it's still socializing, you know, and so some people are really into socializing and some people are so into PVP. That's all they play, you know, in the division too. They love the division too. And they love PvP, so they go into the dark zone, they do that. Even though our PvP situation isn't that great, they're still gonna do it. And yeah, I'm my mind's boggled just as much as yours is. Because I mean the division two's got a horrible PvP uh reputation, right? Like it's a horrible one. And there's so many PvP games out there. Like, there's so many. But and so I don't know what keeps people playing PvP. I don't get it. Because to be honest with you, like, if you just look at any of them, like Call of Duty, right? Which you can now go in third person, by the way. But either way, third person, first person, doesn't matter. But let's just say Call of Duty. You just don't see that weird, I'm standing, let's run in a circle and do chicken dance. I mean, that game's got stupid shit too, right? People are slide tackling, <laughs> you know, and sniping on the slide, you know? It's just crazy shit too. Don't give me, but. And then they're they're doing um, you know weird stuff behind cover or whatever jumping around corners is what I want to say, and so that that's that's all that's all something annoying also. But in our in our PvP man, it's like I mean watch some of those PC players running in circles, you know, dropping the hives and running in circles and just dropping out. It's just like get in cover, man. Shoot each other from cover. What are you guys doing? running in circles to see whose build can outlast the others and you know and it's just like it comes down to that right it's just like it's all situational it's like yeah so you won that one he wins the next one then you win that next one and you and then he wins the next one it's a trade-off it's the same <laughs> yeah titan absolutely the backfire is one of the ones i'm re i was really excited about being able to change because it lacks a burst and so anything to give it a little umph because it requires 200 stacks right yeah it's like rock paper scissors it totally is and so it's all i mean even if you do it even if i do it it's all it all if you think about it it's all quite ridiculous our pvp right it's all quite it's like eventually you just end up in this running uh or putting your shields face to face and trying to see who can kill each other first And usually, and the, the, that's fine, that's fine. But the problem is for new players versus experienced players, experienced players just always going to win. Duh, right? But also because the, new, the experienced player is going to know certain angles or where to jump out and surprise people. And in, in our PvP, the, the person that shoots first wins first in many cases. Unless your builds are completely lopsided, which happens a lot so somebody comes in with all dps the other person comes in with all high armor that high armor guy as long as he gets you to miss shots he's winning that's all he needs to do is get you to miss shots even if you land them first he's gonna run in circles and just regenerate as you're missing shots and he's regenerating and he puts out a couple of shots on you but you're not regenerating and so he just needs to get you to miss and give him, he's just buying himself time to get a, a bullet here, a bullet there, a bullet here, a bullet there. You know what I mean? And as soon as you stop to put on that armor kit, he's got you. Because the time it takes for you to put on the armor kit is the time he can unload on you, right? That's when he unloads on you, as soon as you put that armor kit. So you got the quick armor kit, which helps a little bit, you know? But the quick armor kit is, is really there to give you a chance to escape so you can put on a full armor kit. And then he's, by the time that full armor kit is equipped, he's back in your face. And, but at least you're 
refreshed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he was chasing you, right? So it's it's a really interesting dynamic. It's a really interesting dynamic. And every game has its weird, annoying PvP factors, but I feel like one of the ones that was always the cleanest was Battlefield before they came out with this newest one, 2042, whatever it is. This one's a little more simulation-like, but the ones in the past, like Battlefield 4, I felt like was so clean. It was a clean game. You played, people died, you died, you respawned, let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just wasn't weird shit going on. Not that I remember. Not till they started coming out with the exoskeletons where you're running on walls and bouncing around like the Mario Brothers. <laughs> you know, it's like jumping on mushroom heads and shit. It's like, that's when I was like, okay, I'm out of here. Fuck it. And that's around the time I discovered the division was because they started coming out with those stupid, uh, I'm going to jump 50 meters in the air and fight from up there, <laughs> you know, the type gameplay. It's like, geez. And that's the same ridiculousness we do in our PVP, right? Which is like, I'm going to run in circles and without using cover. And it's like, that's not tactical. Everyone wanted to be Titanfall. Anyways. All right. I'm logging out, folks. Appreciate you. Thanks for hanging with me. Good talks. And I will catch you most likely on Monday. All right, everybody. Peace.